Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. This is the Choose a Main Guide for Tekken 8. Tekken 8, as you can see here, we got a couple of characters, right? There's uh, more than a few characters on the roster, and uh, a lot of them do, well, very different things, funnily enough. Actually, character identity as a whole in Tekken 8 is the best it's ever been in the franchise. And the purpose of this video is we're gonna go over every single character and I'm gonna try to sell you on everybody. What they're all about, what they're capable of, and the general gist of their gameplay. That in mind, this is almost very certainly gonna be a very long video. So there's timestamps for you to skip to whatever character makes sense for you, whatever character you might think you may enjoy. And if you do skip ahead, if you could leave a like, that would be very sincerely appreciated. But otherwise, well, let's start with the protagonist of the series, the protagonist of Tekken 8, known war criminal, Jin Kazama. So let's start with Jin. So Jin's the hero of the game. For some people that matters a lot, even though he is a war criminal, but uh, you know, he's really sorry about it. So I guess all this forgiven. His face is on the box, all that kind of stuff, right? And he sort of has that protagonist privilege in that Jin's kind of just good to above average at everything in this game. I'm talking just basic things like pokes, Forward 4 is really good, lots of range, uh, very fast for what it is. It's not what it used to be on counter hit, uh, it does cause a very lengthy knockdown stun, but you can still get follow up hits after the fact, so there's still some damage there. Uh, other amazing moves. Forward Forward 2, uh, it has incredible reach for what it is, as you can see here it hits from uh, very far away, it's also a heat engager. And to top it off, it's completely safe on block and it does chip damage. So for just kind of like a belligerent, straightforward move, it's pretty good. Now, speaking of that, it is indeed straightforward, right? So uh, for people who are a little more prone to sidestep, stand four for him, kind of everything you need. Uh, it is full tracking out of the gate. You can see the blue spark effect means it covers all angles. And even though the uh, quote unquote magic four as you would in this game is not as strong as it used to be in older games, it still causes a complete crumple effect state when it hits as a counter hit. And you can actually link after the fact like Street Fighter style and get some decent guaranteed damage off of it, right? So just even on the basics, Jin is doing pretty good. And he's got a lot of good things too, like forward forward four is really good with the range. Back two is incredible. Also leaves him uh, low profiling certain highs as well. We got that, right? But the thing is here, this is Tekken, and Jin is a Mishima, which means he has a lot of that classic move set. Not the least of which, yeah, he's got those electrics. What is electric? Well, an electric is a high damaging fast launcher that's also advantage on block. Yes, plus five. So it launches, it's quick, it's plus on block. What's the downside? Well, it is a high. So you can just duck it or low profile it. So there is that. And also there's a pretty strict execution requirement around it. Um, you do have to hit the uh, buttons for the motion at the exact same time. Otherwise you'll get the version that is uh, not as good. Like it's still pretty quick, still sends people flying so you can get combos, uh, but it's uh, slightly punishable on block versus advantage on block. One's much better than the other. Now, hey, Tekken 8 being Tekken 8, we got the heat system, right? So you don't got to worry about that no more. If you're in heat, every move that can be an electric will be an electric. You don't got to time anything. All it'll do is just take a bit of your heat meter and every single time it's always going to be an electric. Always get plus frames, always get a launcher on hit, always the best possible scenario. So if execution's an issue for you, don't worry. The game's got your back as long as you're in the heat mode. And he's got other stuff, right? He's got, you know, the Mishima wave dash, all that kind of stuff. And he has some of the applicable things you would think from it, like, say, the Hell Sweep. And Jin's is actually very good in one specific way. On the stages that will allow for it specifically, Jin's Hell Sweep causes a ground break. And that means you can get combos and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, most of the other quote unquote Hell Sweep style of moves are just, you know, sweep in the hit and send people flying on their way. They don't cause a specific effect. Uh, ground breaks aren't that common right now in Tekken 8. Maybe more stages in the future will be, but still, it's a good property for Jin. And hey, speaking of lows, he's got a lot of good lows. He has a hell sweep, it's always good. You know, he has the usual decent suite of poking, like down back four is a quick, decent damage poke for what it is, plus frames on hit, always handy. But he also has down two. Down two 
is a move that leaves him in full crouch. So he'll low profile, a lot of highs, all that coming his way. So defensive with some offense and is a low, naturally enough. Also good damage, also plus frames. However, on counter hit, it becomes a whole uh, to do here because it spins and launches the enemy. And naturally enough, if you can launch them, you better believe you can combo them and just get some pretty all right damage, right? So that's cool. And it's faster than, you know, some of the slower launching sweeps, right? It only gets it on counter hit, but there's one additional bonus if you get caught. So if this bad boy gets blocked, you're negative, yes. You're punishable even, yes. But you're negative 14, which is just one below the magic number of negative 15. For most, not all, but most characters in the game, if, uh, you know, block a move is negative 15, standing or crouching, it's full launch into big punish, right? So you'll still be able to get punished, but uh, not to the degree other similar moves will leave you punished. So it's basically uh, a lot of upside, crouches under highs, launch on counter hit, decent damage if it still catches people even without a counter hit, and the risk on block is relatively low for the overwhelming advantages it has. So yeah, Jin's very privileged on a lot of his buttons. Also very fun things for Jin is uh, in Heat, specifically the power stance comes much better. It becomes advantage on block and you may notice he dashes forward and has like red glowing evil eyes, right? Uh, when that happens, he actually gets access to different moves. He gets the classic electric, not the normal one he does, the hook fist. He gets the classic Mishima style electric uppercut. And he also gets the classic hell sweep as well versus, you know, his take on it. And keep in mind, he still has things like the classic stance where he can do fun things like devil infused dive kicks and all that. Basically, Jin's got a lot to work with in this game. So if you're looking for someone who has just a little bit of everything, some fun execution requirements with electrics. Although if you don't like those, it's all covered for you in heat and it's not necessarily like necessary to use those, right? Although if you can do it, hey, go for it. But if you're looking for someone who has just a bit of everything, Jin's that guy. Now, let's talk Paul. Paul has a bit of a reputation, maybe earned, maybe earned, as a very silly gorilla-like character. Why? Well, he kind of can force a 50-50 game that's very deadly down your throat very easily. Why? He has the Death Fist. And the Death Fist is basically just a big F-off punch. He'll just throw a right straight into you and send you flying, right? And that's about all she wrote. The damage can be good, God help you if it connects as a counter hit because it's going to do some pretty extreme damage. And depending on the character, depending on the spacing, it can actually even be mildly difficult to punish. It just kind of works out this way. And as you can see here, it's mid, right? A middle attack means you have to block it standing. Okay, sure enough. But what's scary with the lows? So Paul has the Demo Man. So Demo Man starts low, so you have to crouch block. And it's basically just kind of a pre-can combo and also has just frame timing if you want to sneak in just a little bit more damage. And 40 damage is a lot for a low. It's a lot, a lot. Even if you don't get the just frame timing and does just a little bit less damage, uh, it's still a lot for a low. So in a nutshell, Paul has a devastating mid and a devastating low. So you have to block those different, one standing, one crouching. And if you're doing one, that means you get hit by the other. And that's kind of the reputation Paul's got over the years, but there's a lot more to the character than that. Paul, despite the silliness of the Unga Bunga mid-low game, actually can play some very solidly fundamental Tekken. Like if you want to play this the game properly, he's actually really good at that too. Here's a good one for you, the generic launcher, down forward two. Most of the characters in the game have something like this and you know, it hits, cool. And if it hits, cool, launch. You know, we can get whatever combo, go from there. Sure. His is a little different. His is a bit unique. Because unlike so many others, his is safe on block. Sure, it's negative. You know, you kind of lost your turn perhaps, but many of the generic launchers in the game are unsafe on block. His is not. So if you're just looking to pop people up and you get blocked, oh well, you know, sure you gotta play a little defensive, but nothing guaranteed is coming your way. He also has things like his back sway stance. And he has a lot of ways with a lot of different buttons here to kind of transition into it. And from back sway, he has a lot of very powerful moves. Like back sway one, if it connects, splats you to the ground. And if it hits as a counter hit, 
It's a big bounce. And of course, naturally enough with a big bounce, you can kind of get the whole combo thing going on, right? Sure. And also while it's even on block, it does inflict chip damage on the enemy. So even on block, you get rewarded. Backsway two is a heat engager mid, handy. Backsway three is a quick low. And the quick low also has a string attached to it if you're looking for stagger pressure. And backsway four, oh my word. Backsway four is a full circle tracking, so he can't sidestep it, big old hit. On counter hit, it's a crumple, so you can kind of just do whatever you want after the fact. You're going to get some good guaranteed damage. And on block, it's chip damage and slight advantage on block. So just like stuff from the sway and like the various moves you can do from sway and all that kind of stuff, like go into the sway stance, like lots of good options. It basically covers all the bases. He has a mid, he has a low, he can stop you from stepping. And uh, if you stay still, he can have plus frames. And if you stay still and try to crouch and duck the high, he can still get shit. He gets a lot out of it. Okay, so we're going to swing back and forth here. Yes, he has dumb mid-low mix, right? He can just 50-50 demo man, death fist all day. And if you want to get more into the real aspect of the character, uh, things like backsway pressure and just everything it offers is really good. There's some really good options there. And he has just really good normals too. Like up forward two is a leaping high and so it goes over lows also plus on block for one plus two is another plus on block move that forces the enemy to crouch so as the character is really adept at just forcing plus frames and kind of taking turn after turn that's handy he is a character that utilizes all three throw breaks which is a pretty interesting trait uh he's not exactly a full grappler but it means he's a little bit better than the rest of the cast when it comes to throwing people in fact one of the throws has just frame timing, right? So if you get perfect timing versus the regular time, you actually get a few more points of damage. So that's Sandy too. In heat mode though, this is where ignorant Paul comes back. Uh, many of his moves become holdable and become guard breaks. So like say this move right here, this is back to hold one. Even if you block it, it's a guard break, guaranteed damage. Maybe you won't get a lot, a lot of damage, but it is guaranteed. Another one here, down one, hold two. It's basically the death fist. And if it connects, that's all she wrote. You're taking guaranteed damage no matter what. It's a guard break. Oh, well, too bad. All of his death fist style moves get better as well in heat mode. And with the fact that he has just guard breaks and can just steamroll over you, it just kind of helps the unga bunga function of Paul. So I guess that's kind of where they're leaning this time around. But yeah, Paul can be total gorilla mode, total unga bunga, but there is solid Tekken in there too, if you want that. And so Paul is a man of the people and serves many audiences. Like that's why we're on the stage we're on, right? You can see Earth, why? Because Paul's the strongest in the universe. It's not a joke, it's the brand, baby. And he can literally burst through his own jacket with his muscles. And I, I, Paul is just really cool. I've always liked Paul. So hopefully this is giving you an idea what Paul's all about. Now let's talk newcomer Azucena. Do you like dancing? Cause uh, that's sort of what the heart of what this character is. Uh, pretty much everything she does involves some sort of dancing, like even her stances, right? This is dancing for the sake of dancing, but this kind of dancing actually has gameplay mechanics behind it. So one of the core aspects of her is the Liberator stance, liberation stance. And while she's holding this specific stance, she auto dodges all highs and auto counters all lows. So here we are in the stance and Asuka going for those highs and this is not going to happen. These are not going to gain any purchase on me. I get to sidestep them every time. And depending on the move, depending on the angle, you can have a little to a lot of advantage frames going your way. Much the same here if we go for some lows. This gets kicked in the head. All lows just get kicked in the head. There is no way to touch her this way. The only thing that can hit her is a mid. And sure enough, mid, they'll just do the trick. There's, there's nothing else there, right? Mids will just blast through this stance. Now, it is to a degree, I would even say a little gimmicky, but the option is there. The thing about this is she has multiple stances. There's this stance, and there's also a back turn stance. And you add those two together with the moveset she has, she can do a lot of things. So out of this stance specifically, we get gigantic launchers. We get hell sweeps, always handy. Uh, we can just do all sorts of things, all sorts of options, including going uh, for one of our grabs out of it. 
from back turn stance. We also get different kinds of evasion, by the way. Uh, she's a very evasive character. Uh, we have good counterattack moves, good moves that crush lows, and obviously, as you can see here, causes a little bit of a bounce, and you can combo after the fact. And she has a lot of great ways to transition into these. So, uh, say her down back three. Very fast, slow, leaves her at slight advantage. And therefore, you're kind of immediately in the mix zone, right? Because if you dare press a button, uh, you'll go for one, two, counter hit, and that goes into a full combo. Get a quick 10 frame punish, one, one. It immediately puts you at plus eight frames in stance directly in front of the enemy. And then they're going to have to start guessing. Are we going low for hell sweeps? Are we going to go for quick uh, stand four mid? Are we just going to go for broke and go for the gigantic launch? Like, there's so much going on here. And once again, there's still a lot to go. So you've seen she has a lot of trickiness, right? But she also has a lot of raw aggression. Like, there's running three, two which I almost wonder from the beta days if this was gonna get nerfed, and no, they didn't touch it. So it's a running mid high. And the thing about it is, well, if it hits, it hits. It sends them flying, does pretty good damage. The part of it that's a mid comes out very fast, by the way, and it also jails, meaning even though it's mid high, you can't duck the high. If you block the mid, you have to block the high. There is no way out. So generally, a lot of running attacks, there's always like a catch, right? Either it's a high, or it's a little bit slower startup or something. And no, this is just kind of best of both worlds here. A uh, very fast startup for what it is. And you get the advantage flames on block, you get the damage on hit, and you're just stuck. The only thing I can knock against it is, since it's kind of brain dead, uh, you can probably see it come in and easily sidestep it. So that's something, I guess. She also has a crouching throw. And by the way, you cannot tech crouching throws in this game. And uh, she has a lot of ways to force people into it. Uh, like forward, forward, four. It's just a big old ax kick, right? And also, uh, by the way, on block, it is pretty decent because it forces crouch at neutral and does chip damage. But if it connects, forces crouch on hit, and you can naturally just combo into uh, the crouch grab. That's free guaranteed damage. You can't tech crouch grabs. I'll come back to the crouch grab in a second because she is a master class in counter hits. One plus two as a counter hit. Full on crumple. Full combo. Back turn one plus two. Boom, full combo. Like a lot of these are just gonna be full combos because that's just how she works. Down four, three, knee, boom, crumple, full combo. Down one, ground bounce, full combo. 13 frames while standing once, counter hit, boom, crumple, full combo. Full crouch three, quick low poke, counter hit. Well, hey, we're gonna keep this going, right? Slip stun, guaranteed grab, not quite a full combo, but hey, 50 damage is 50 damage. Counter hit, back turn three, quick low. Boom, guaranteed low grab, right? So she just has so many counter hit options, right? So on top of like her weird back turn stance or a forward uh, liberation stance, and all these things just keep people off balance. She's really good at it. So if you can just kind of get in people's heads and force a lot of counter hit situations, she's really good at it is what I'm trying to say. And uh, keeping with the flow of some of her oddball traits, she has a low grab. It's very unique for what it is. So you get the grab in, uh, and also it forces you into stance after the fact. So while you're grab, you get your grab, you're gonna have quite a bit of advantage frames. Make them guess, go from there, right? But the thing is with this grabs, compared to other grabs, is uh, it's not techable, but you can stop it, but you can stop it in a way that's beneficial to her. So to beat this one, you just crouch. And you see, you just kind of kick her away, right? Now, unlike other grabs where, say, if you crouch it or whatever, on the other end, whoa, crouch, boom, big launch, right? Since there's this canned animation, and she does take a little damage, but it's a lot more than a punish, you know? Uh, she's a little negative, takes a little damage, all recoverable damage, and then that's it. So no guaranteed damage for stopping this, like anything like that. If you get it, she takes a little bit, but not quite, you know, like a third of her life or anything, right? So it's just a interesting way to look at a unique grab. Besides that, just a lot of good buns, like stand three, uh, has a lot of reach for what it is. Uh, down forward one, quick mid. It goes into uh, down forward one, four, which also jails. You cannot duck this high at all. So just good for keeping people honest. And of course, she's crazy dancing lady, right? And just other things like keeping people honest, right? So we showcased how uh, she has good punish into mix, right? But on top of that, she also has just one, two, which does a lot of damage and wall splats in the corner. That's also 10 frame start, right? So we can get a lot of guaranteed damage off this. Like, it just works out, right? If you like silly dancing girl and want to dance the night away, and by the way, there's the UFO in the background. 
Uh, she's also obsessed with UFOs. A lot of her moves have UFO or alien related stuff in the move set, and I don't know what that's about. But if you like dancing, lady, if you like alien abductions while dancing, Azucena is that character. Okay, Leroy, we're going to do the whole thing, don't worry. But we can cut this short for some people. Do you like the Ip Man movies? If you do like the Ip Man movies, and if you're also a fan of dogs, well then, uh, Leroy's that dude, because he has a dog that can sometimes attack. Sometimes Sugar, his tracking's not so great, and sometimes he just refuses to attack, because his brain's like that, right? Uh, but if you like quick punches and dogs, yo, Leroy. But there's a lot more besides that. So Leroy, if you don't know the history, used to be the terror of Tekken. Uh, for quite some time in Tekken 7, he ran the game. He was the game. There was Leroy and there was everybody else. These days, he's a lot more fair, but he's still pretty dang cool because he's the master of offensive defense and defensive offense. Because a lot of things he does can basically just stop the enemy in their tracks, turn it on their head, and turn it against them. So many moves that he does has a defensive property to it one way or another. And it can be a little innocuous, right? But it can be very deadly. Big move coming your way. Things like up one can just stop the move dead in its track and you can get automatic counter hits from it. Same deal here. Moves like down back one plus two will just eat the move coming your way and slam them on the other side. Some moves like up back two also just completely destroy punches on their way to you. So they'll just kind of deflect the punch coming in and slam you on the other end. And he has certain strings as well where he can force this after the string. And if you try to hit a button very quickly after the fact, well then he can eat your move and just send you going, right? So it's actually kind of dangerous to try to take turns against Leroy because many of his attacks, many of his strings kind of automatically have a defensive property built into them. And depending on the move you did, it might just get blown away. Even if you hit first, you did right, right? But uh, a lot of the moves, the startup has the defensive property built into it, and you kind of just got suckered. And he also has the hermit stance, and a lot of things are capable from this stance, and a lot of moves he does can shift directly into it. And what this move has is an automatic low parry. So if I go like down 4-4, four, four, puts me in stance, you try to hit me with a low afterwards, you just get got. If the move you did was any kind of low, that's all she wrote. And it also leaves him advantage enough that he can get some guaranteed damage after the fact. So it can be different to attack him from all sorts of angles. So many things just have built-in defensive properties. And Hermit Stance is fun for what it is too. He has a lot of options from it. Like he has a Hell Sweep, a very high damaging low from it here. Some interesting attack strings, Hexim even punches here that also have the defensive Sabaki effects built into it, right? So just because he's in the stance doesn't mean the defensive attack train stops. Of course, from here, you can do his Ip Man punches as well. And this is just a big part of the character. He can just go turbo on you whenever. Like, uh, it's just a lot of hits. And the magic of all that here with the heat stance, right? That's chip damage. Look at the chip damage on this. Look at Feng's health. That's safe on block. And he lost like 10% of his life just on chip. And yes, chip being chip, you can regain it in this game. But still, that's a lot of chip damage to take for something that's nominally safe. Like, if Heat's about to run out, he can just start <laughs> deleting your health bar bit by bit, right? Um, so, chip damage and Leroy with these Hitman punches uh, when he's in Heat Stance, it's a very real thing. And, of course, just even the basic moves here, very staggerable. Like, will he, won't he go for all the additional follow-up hits? Who knows? And hope you know and hope you guessed right, because otherwise you're in for a bad time if you don't. And for fans of hit confirming your combos, like general safety, you want to put the least amount of risk possible out there, don't worry. One plus two, one plus two, one, that's all hit confirmable. You can see it all blocked or not, and you can go for the whole thing on hit if you want to, and if you get blocked, you can stop whenever you want. Very easy. Now, we've talked so much about, like, proactive offensive defense, but he has this actual defense defense. His back two is, like, an actual parry stance, and it effectively gets all highs and all mids. Like, it'll lose to lows, specifically, but everything short of a low, pretty much it'll get you. So Fang's gonna be doing a bunch of boots to us, right? Mid boots. And you can see here, we can just kind of toss that boot aside, no big deal. And if we toss something aside, we get guaranteed follow-ups. Now the timing can't be too early, can't be too late, right? But 
you know, if you have the read on the opponent and you don't know exactly what they're going to do, like some of his parries only deal with punches, right? Maybe it's a kick coming your way you don't know. This grabs kind of everything, right? So as long as your timing is on the ball, you can get some good damage. And if your timing's perfect, you get a nice little screen stop so you can really set up the punish. With perfect timing, your follow-ups just simply do more damage so you get a better reward for it. Okay, that sounds all cool, but you know what I'm really missing here is a unique mechanic that only exists for him and nobody else in the game where I can get an ultra powerful attack once per game. Oh wait, he has exactly that. So he has the cane and the cane is legitimately once per game. We're in training mode so I can just kind of spam it if I want, but it's not once per round. If you do it on round one, that's it. You're never seeing it ever again. And the cane, well, the base level is, it's a mid, it launches and launches very high. As you can see here, combos are not an issue. If it's blocked, it does chip damage and a lot, a lot of chip damage, by the way. And it's completely safe on block. And new to this version of the game, we got this bad boy. Once again, big launch, big mid. So you got to block it standing. And if you're blocking standing, well, you're probably not blocking the low version, which is also a launcher. Now, decidedly being a low, this one's not safe on block because that's just how this game works but yeah so these are very powerful moves once again once per game not per round if you're looking for something just overwhelmingly strong i need to win this round this is a pretty good tool for it so yeah leroy's got a lot of things a lot of cool tools once again he's got a dog like for some people myself included dog's probably enough right there right and dog's got like a cool hoodie and everything that's cool and leroy's just he's just a cool dude he's just really cool right so if this stuff sounds good to you, Leroy is that guy. Now, are you ready to get hype? Are you ready to get excitement? Because we got Mr. Charisma himself, Shaheen. Oh yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a joke. Shaheen's a good guy, okay? He gets ragged on a bit. um, Because through no fault of his own game plan, he's considered a pretty boring character. You know what his game plan? Like, yo, Shaheen's got the moves. Like, he can do some stuff on you, right? Like, he's got all the cool flippy stuff. Uh, he has some of the most uh, great health effects in that they, these um, screen effects that you're seeing here. When that happens, it drains all recoverable health. That's really cool. And he's got really fun and powerful things like uh, his slide game. Uh, he can hit you with a low and kind of force you into a bit of a mix. Pretty dang well. Like, most people are not thinking about blocking lows from, like, you know, a couple character lengths away. He can very much put that threat of a low in your face. But yeah, Shaheen, like, a lot of his tools are just decidedly okay, but he's got some sassy stuff. Uh, you know, has run to, it's a mid, plus on block, big blast on hit, what's not the love. He has things like up forward one, which is really cool. So up forward one, just a big old leaping strike. Since it's a leap, goes over lows, is also an advantage on block. And it's a mid, right? So you're not ducking it or whatever. Uh, you can try to step it if you see it coming, but there's a lot of fun gimmicks with it. Like the fact if you hold down, you cancel the hit. And all of a sudden, you know, if you try to step me, cool, get thrown or get hit with anything else we can dream of, right? It's a really good fake out potential to it. And he's speaking of plus frames, right? As back three, uh, pretty fast mid for what it is, considering it forces crouch in your plus three after the fact. And if it hits as a counter hit, actually gives enough uh, advantage to go into a guaranteed linked follow up, which also is a heat engager, so you can go pressure, pressure, pressure. So basically a move that's literally all upside plus on block and giant uh reward on counter hit what's not the love and keeps the train going too like a forward three plus four also advantage on block right this move also shifts into the stealth step this is kind of his unique command step and he has a lot of fun options from this as well uh going all the way into like surfboarding on you uh, it's actually really good for combos too as it enforces uh, the tornado state and also can do you know if this is a mid you know, and this is a low, kind of writes itself. It's not the most amazing crouch dash in the game, right? But just some extra little tricks. One thing that is exciting in this game for Shaheen is that he has something that's really new and uh, pretty rare in 3D fighting space. He has an actual flash kick, as in hold down, charge, hit up, and two in this case. And he'll do effectively like a flash kick, although with his hands, just like Guile. And what's really cool about this specifically is it gets really scary in heat mode. So this move in heat mode causes a guard break. Can you see that little glass breaking effect there? And two things about that. One, as you notice, like any move in 
heat mode, right? It's going to do chip damage. And as a guard break, he does get a guaranteed hit on you. And the beauty is the guaranteed hit he gets on you is a move that removes all recoverable health. So that block damage you just took is real true damage. You can consider that a true combo even though you blocked. So that's scary. That's not something you can play around with. Normally, a lot of guard breaks in this game, like whatever you do, the follow-up will do less damage. It'll scale because that's how it is, right? But that initial block you did, that initial little bit of recoverable health, that's just part of the damage, right? So it's actually a titanic amount of guaranteed damage compared to most other guard break scenarios in this game. So that, that's something he can do and uh, nobody else really can. Other people have guard breaks, but they're not gonna do that kind of damage. Also to speak of it, while in heat, he's one of the few characters that has two heat smashes. So we kind of have a standard one and does good damage and also goes directly into stealth step. And we have another one while you're in stealth step specifically, it's actually a low heat smash. So it doesn't do as much damage, but it is a low. And you know, a 40 damage low, if the opponent's not looking for it, that's a lot, that could be game winning, right? So pretty interesting stuff. Not too many people have two heat smashes and Shaheen's lucky to be one of them. So yeah, okay, some of this is a little ho-hum, but I think Shaheen's a character with some very, really strong strengths. Lots of plus frames, uh, lots of trickiness. Uh, even that guy we showed earlier, that's a heat engager too. If it just hits, cool. And if it doesn't hit, hey, plus on block. So like, I'm not gonna complain. It's chip damage too, right? On top of the cancel to gimmick people out and do whatever you wanna do. Um, he has a stealth step, any crouch step, any crouch dash is good, regardless if it's not one of the best ones, still good to have. And he has debatably the best guard break in the game. So I think that works out. So if this sounds good, Shaheen is your boy. Kazuya Mishima. He's the big bad. He's the other guy that's on the box of the game you bought, right? And of the Mishimas, he is the Mishima. Why? He has the Electric Wind God Fist. Not a uh, Electric Wind God Fist. The Electric Wind God Fist. He has the Hell Sweep. Not a Hell Sweep. He has the Hell Sweep. So scary moves. Fast. Launcher. Plus on block. Hard to see low, very high damage for what it is. God forbid your sword near a wall when it happens, because depending on the angle, it can lead to a full combo as well. And many other things. Naturally has the mission of wave dash. So, you know, just kind of getting in, staying in people's faces. And of course, other wave dash moves like the uppercut, all that kind of stuff. And like Jin, you know, things like electrics, they're hard to do, they're hard to do. So if you're in heat mode, don't worry. Even if your timing is off, Every Wind God Fist is automatically an electric no matter what. And uh, I guess I'm bearing the lead here because he turns into a giant devil man. Right? That's kind of the appeal, I guess. Are you looking to be a big old devil man and have, you know, devil man moves? While you're in devil form and heat, a lot of moves get better. Like 112, if you hold forward and doing 112, you get a big old like demonic slide going on the other end. Things like the Hell Sweep. Oh boy, Hell Sweep. Uh, Gets a lot more dramatic, as you can tell here. Uh, does a lot more damage as well. Even has a giant armored explosion. This is very powerful and takes up almost all your heat meter, by the way, but it's really good. But don't worry, like some of the uh, traditional devil moves, like laser beams, you can just do these whenever. Like this isn't Akuma or just Street Fighter in general. You're not gonna win zoning wars as they are with this, right? But you can occasionally catch people sleeping. At bare minimum, even if they block it, it does appreciable chip damage, right? So if they're asleep at the wheel, they're one laser beam away from getting got. In other games, Kazi is not necessarily a, a character you would uh, associate with having good range, but things like forward forward two actually kind of work out. As you can see here, the range is really big. It does chip damage. It's very fast for like the general range of it. Uh, it's not even punishable, even point blank, it's not punishable, but uh, with the pushback here, the negative nine is just basically a suggestion because uh, even if they come right out, you can easily just, you know, backdash whatever's coming your way, right? So this move's very powerful on its just base level. Also, 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 if you hit, it's a heat engager, right? So go in, get your massive plus frames and just kind of figure it out from there. So 442 is actually really powerful for the character. Also, just to mention here, while you're in heat mode, 442 is also another devil enhanced move. 
so it gets all the better yet. But in the end, Kazuya is basically still a lot of the classic Mishima stuff, right? Hell sweep, electrics, all that. Um, his general execution level is higher than most of the other characters due to stuff like that, electrics especially because he needs the electrics. Uh, but on the flip, on the fun side, the devil form, like he's never not been more devil than in this very game, right? So on top of the fact, you know, wall and heat, also every uh, electric is actually an electric regardless if you botch the timing or not, right? Because uh, Lord knows if you're anything like me, your timing can be suspect at best, right? So uh, that's very helpful. But yeah, if you're looking for that classic Mishima experience with some cool devil powers and lasers and purple glowy bits, Kazuya is the dude. All right, coming up to Steve Fogg. Steve is the boxer. So like that on his face is gonna sell you or not on a lot of it, right? And as a boxer, well, he's unsurprisingly punch oriented. In fact, even things like his general kick buttons, right? Left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick. As a boxer, he's not kicking you so much. Although, he's got some dirty boxing there. He will step on your toes, right? So he's not a purely clean boxer. But yeah, so things like left kick, right kick, right? Are just dodges left and right. Uh, he can dodge in, he can dodge out. And he's got all sorts of sways, all sorts of just ways to do stances, all sorts of twirls. He even has uh, Mike Tyson's peekaboo stance specifically. And old Iron Mike... Pretty good example of a boxer, right? And one of the beauties of Steve, even though he has lots of stances, which can be a little confusing and scary, but once you get the hang of it, they all flow into each other. So just to give you an example of how everything can flow in each other, right? Stand one, two, as basic as basic gets, can go into a side dodge. And side dodge can go into a shoulder, and shoulder can go into peekaboo stance. So one stance into another stance into another stance and peekaboo stance. We can get a bunch of attacks in and go to another stance. We can go into flicker stance. And from flicker stance, we can go directly into the twirl stance. And when you put it all together, it can be kind of hard to know when exactly is your turn against Steve, right? Because one attack goes in this stance, this stance goes in this attack, and that attack goes in this stance and so on and so forth. And I guess that's good with so many different stances, so many attacks, it also helps that he's kind of the king of counter hits. Because while you're panicking, you don't know what's what, uh, he has so many moves that on a regular hit are all right, but as a counter hit are extra special. Hey, let's look at something like back one. Okay, whatever, like that's a nothing hit, right? As a counter hit though, boom, you're done. <laughs> Lights out. And back one also can be canceled into the flicker stance, by the way, so handy. Other powerful counter hit moves are like down four two, which on its face doesn't look impressive. It's only plus eight, but down four two can be canceled into a myriad of the stances, which is what makes it go. So now on counter hit down four two forward stance cancel here, it's plus 17, not plus eight like before, right? A lot more frame advantage so we can get some fun stuff. Like sending the opponent just absolutely flying after a machine gun punch series. And he's got all sorts of stuff like this, right? He's all about tricking you, getting you into a counter hit, the counter hit doing something extraordinary, and then just kind of blowing you up from there. Uh, some of the other interesting things about the character, which sort of directly plays into the heat stance, uh, things like his double duck stance, right? Double duck stance gives him some of his best moves, just straight up. Like double ducking forward and two, right? Regular duck forward two, like it's all right. You see here it knocks down, right? But the double duck version crumples, which gives you a full combo. In heat, he can skip the first step and go directly into the double duck and get the benefit of the move without, you know, the tell of you having to manually do the double duck yourself. So it gets you to the good part of the move earlier, but it also gives you additional sassy things. Like it gives you a new move out of the double duck stance. In that, he can go actual boxing. Like he can clinch you like a lame boxer would. You know, the kind of boxer that would step on your feet would, right? So... That's an interesting little thing he can do, and it forces a true 50-50 grab mix-up. Once in clinch, he hits one or two. If he hits one, it gives him a lot of frame advantage, and he can just go directly into strikes to get a combo afterwards. If he does a special heat duck and hits two while in the clinch, he just blasts you. He gets a lot of damage too. You can't know which is which, you just have to guess. So that's actually quite powerful. And speaking of quite powerful, things like the new up back two, so up back two, just on his face, is a 17 frame high, 
that is a full tracking move and it's plus on block. A plus on block move that's less than 20 frames, that's pretty all right, right? And you might notice uh, some fancy footwork here. This is his new stance add to the game. This is the Lionheart stance. So up back to just automatically transitions to it. So if it hits, it gives you enough frame advantage. It just directly links into the stance one and it's a heat engager too. So that just all kind of works out. If it is blocked while you're in the stance, you can freely transition into many of the other stances. So don't worry about that. And the actual stance itself, let's talk about it. Uh, so it has, you know, some strikes as you would expect, right? Um, it's pretty good, but the real thing here is the one, two, one plus two from this, this bad boy here. So this move, this big old flashing move is a guard break. Okay. A guard break and you don't got to be in heat mode. Uh, so many of the guard breaks in this game, you got to be in heat. And there's usually some caveat. The only caveat here is you just got to be in the stance. That's it. One plus two guard break. Now it's a high. It's got to be some weakness, right? It's only 20 frames. It's a high, so you can duck it. But yeah, being able to access a guard break when you're not in heat mode at all, it's plus 12 guard break, which means anything 12 or less frames is a guaranteed combo if it's blocked. So just as an example here, 1-1-2, one, one, guaranteed, even if the enemy is set to block everything because it's a guard break, right? So just very interesting. Other fun properties of the move, if you're specifically in heat stance, it's also a mid counter and it'll go directly into the clinch stance. And then you're in clinch stance, you're in heat, you can directly get a punch follow up and deal, you know, appreciable amount of damage. So that's a bit more edge case, have to be in heat, have to be in stance, has to be in mid, but it's there, it's interesting. So in the NC, he's got lots of stances, he's got lots of options, right? And they all do a lot of different things. Uh, they're not the biggest stance move sets, right? So it's a little confusing. They gotta learn a lot of little mini stances, but they all flow into each other great. And if you're just looking to be like a very tricky person, have lots of evasive tools, because a lot of these stances have evasiveness built into them, and force just a lot of knowledge checks on the enemy, because if they don't know what's up, you're probably just gonna run them over, right? If you like stylish action, lots of movement, lots of trickiness, and lots of just punishing enemies for making dumb mistakes, Steve is that guy. Now let's talk Jack-8. So Jack-8 is technically a newcomer, because he's not Jack-7, he's not Jack-6, he's not P-Jack, you know, not Gun-Jack, all that, right? So technically a new character, I guess. Uh, now, he's the big guy, right? And you're probably going to make some assumptions about him being the big guy in that he's slow to a degree. Yes. One thing that's not slow. Uh, he actually has like one of the best back dashes in the game. So he's not slow on like a mobility way. Although when it comes to sidestepping and sidewalking, uh, due to the fact that he's fat, he's very wide. It is more difficult for him to sidestep, but on like a purely 2d plane of back and forward, uh, he's actually quite fast. So there is that. Now on the flip though, slow, yes, he does have some slower moves, right? He does have a 10 frame move. He has two of them in fact, but it's not just stand one, like pretty much everyone else in the game. His stand one is 12 frames. Stand two is 11 frames, right? So he has forward two, which is good in its own way. We'll talk about it in a second. That's 10 frames. And his uh, generic, just kind of like down jab, down one is also 10 frames. And also his down one, is a good deal longer range than a lot of other characters. You're gonna find that across the board. He's got the range, right? Like stuff like down two, down two, not a lot of people's best move, but for him, a quick low poke that goes as far as this does, right? Like that's not too bad. Now uh, going back to uh, forward two for a second, it's a little unique. Once again, 10 frames. So technically his fastest move, tied forward anyways. So if you need a 10 frame punish, this is your best bet. But the cool thing about this is specifically on counter hit, on counter hit, it splats people. And it splats people in a way that you get some fun follow ups from. So 50 damage for a quick 10 frame jab, that's not how it works for most of the rest of the cast. Now, just so you know, it's not the safest on block, although depending on the distance you use it at, it can be safe. Some other non standard things about our big boy, just stand two, just basic stand two jab, right? So it's 11 frames. And unlike just about everyone else in the game, his is advantage on block. So you can kind of just bully people with like your very slight plus frames. And when they finally calm down for a second, boom, oh, go for a quick grab, something like that. He actually has an above average grab game, which is very handy. Uh, his damage off grabs is pretty good. He utilizes all three breaks. He has lots of grabs. 
uh, with lots of interesting properties, either being like side switching or say, if you're looking to splat people in the wall, the same grab can do that, right? So not exactly king or anything, but the grab game is pretty good. And again, too, once they're standing still for a second, you can go for that old high-low mix and his high-low game is actually not bad. Uh, he has down back one, which is incredible. It is a 12 frame low. Also leaves you a very slight advantage. Also leaves you in his crouching state. And his game from crouch, like while standing from crouch or full crouch, actually is really good. Uh, he has some incredible uh, wall rising and full crouch options. Even if something is basically this, right? Like full crouch, one, one. It's low, then it's low. The first low, it'll probably get you because that's just how it is. So, okay, I'll crouch block the second low. And he has can mix because one, two from full crouch is low mid. And if you duck or try to parry or whatever, you get blown up. And he has other mid options like full crouch down forward for two. You may notice a little bit of a flash there. He actually borrows some moves from Gigas from Tekken 7. Poor Gigas not joining us this time around. So whenever you see that little flash there on his eye, that means it's a move that came from Gigas. It's an imported move. So his roster on top of the usual Jack stuff is getting better. And it's going back to down one, like you see a level of escalation here from down back one. So quick low, down back two, full crouching, quick low. Uh, on the edge of reactability, pretty good damage for what it is. And God help you if it hits this counter hit because some quick guaranteed damage for him, pretty appreciable. And then he has debugger. So debugger is a full circle low, can't sidestep it. It's slower, but it's a guaranteed knockdown. It sends the enemy flying. So he's just got lows for all ranges, right? So that's kind of the deal is he's a good range character and naturally too, he's got the mids that got the range, like back one, two. Uh, it's a heat engager. So that's always handy to set up. And it hits from an incredible distance considering its relative speed. Uh, it's a 15 frame move. Like 15 frame moves, generally speaking, unless they come from like runs or something. So there's some setup, don't have that kind of range. Jack has that kind of range. Keep in mind too, even like his generic down four two launcher, right? Hits from much further away than just about everyone else in the cast. Uh, the only competition he would have, I would say is Kuma and Panda, I think has a little bit more range. But other than that, like his whiff punish game off a generic down four two uppercut, pretty all right. Basically Jack's pretty honest and straightforward which is uh, usually not something people say about big characters. He's just, he's got good moves, got good range, got good movement. He just plays Tekken pretty all right. Also new to this game is the stance. So Jack's always kind of been an Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of guy. Now he's literally flexing on you. And this is one of the best things about him in this game because the stance has lots of options and all the really fun options. And most of these options are plus on block too, right? So stance four, big old rocket kick. Uh, also a heat engager. So if you get blasted, we're going for a ride. Stance three, big old stomp, mid, also plus on block. Stance two, high, super plus on block, plus 11 on block. And for the people who think they're smart, you know, okay, we'll sidestep some of the stuff, right? Or I'll duck it. Well, then we have stance one, which is a full tracking mid, right? So no sidestepping, no ducking, no trying to get past Jack's moves. Now, keeping in theme here, he has a lot of moves that transition directly into stance, so he can kind of keep the offense flowing from that. But the thing about the stance is he's also tanking while in the stance. It has a power crush property, which means it has armor. As you see there, he kind of laughs it off, right? And this catches highs and mids, basically everything but lows. And the window's fairly generous. It doesn't start frame one or anything. But if you know something's coming and you don't necessarily believe you have an attack that can come out in time, this will be pretty good. Also, when you see this little buff happening, it turbocharges stance one and it turbocharges stance two. So turbocharging stance one sends people flying into a full flip, meaning you get a guaranteed combo. So a uh, heck of a lot better than just uh, you know the base hit itself, right? And stance two is the money maker. Let's call it for what it is. When stance two is charged, it's a little slower, right? You see, that wasn't necessarily a punish. Um, but if it hits, big damage. And if it is a punish, I really don't care. So now Alyssa is gonna block. Look at that. Still plus eleven. Did you notice all those uh, extra effects going on there? That's a guard break. So that means I have guaranteed damage coming my way. So even when she's blocking, 
Don't matter, your guard broke and you can't block anymore because you blocked the move. So it makes it very powerful because you can kind of just do whatever you want. It's literally free damage if they block. So when you're in heat mode, this is always live no matter what. You don't need to have a parry timing or anything. It just is on. So every time you do stance two, or you do stance one as well, you get the bonus effect. And also it makes stance one completely safe on block two. So that's really handy. And the thing about heat mode is, well, you're in heat mode, right? Which means you have access to the heat smash. And wouldn't you know it, Jack's heat smash, one of the fastest in the game, it's 10 frames. So it gives him another 10 framer. So it's a punish that, uh, you know, you can get in rare situations, right? Cause he doesn't have good 10 frame punish, but uh, 10 frames means it falls into the guard crush window. So if I'm in heat mode, I'm just going like, you know, attack, 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 whoops, stance cancel, gotcha, stance cancel, oh, gotcha, boom. Uh, that means once you block stance two, that heat smash, that's guaranteed. That was guaranteed. You can't stop it. The only way to have stopped that is during that whole onslaught, you had to immediately recognize stance two for what it was and duck or sidestep it. And if you didn't, too bad. Because I'm still in heat mode, I have the heat smash, and the heat smash is fast enough to catch you in that guard break window. Guaranteed damage. So, Jack, big buttons, good movement, above average grab game, the new stance, which is really cool. You can be really stupid and ignorant in heat mode because of the guard break. And he still has a lot of the classic Jack isms. Like, if you want to do the old Cossack kicks, that's all still there, don't worry. And has the gimmick where if you start crouch blocking, he has a crouch and grab to grab you as well. Also, to add, it's one of the few characters that have a crouch and grab. Crouching grabs are unteckable in this game. And you can also do crouching grab from his stance. So forward three plus four, which is a big old headbutt, forces crouching on the enemy. Stance cancel plus 15, which means you have exactly enough frames to combo directly into crouch grab to it combo 50 damage. Not bad for like a most of the screen poke. Let's put it that way. So if you like big guy things, if you like a lot of the classic Jackisms, like one, you know, that stuff's all still there. Um, you like just playing actual fundamental Tekken, despite the fact he's a big character. Most people disregard big characters in other fighting games as people who don't play the main game. Jack plays the proper game very properly. So if you like big guys doing big things, Jack is that guy. The classic Yoshimitsu Tekken stalwart, Soul Calibur favorite as well. He's in a lot of different games. So he's here looking, uh, this is maybe my second favorite look since Tekken 3, honestly. I like this whole color going on here. Uh, he's looking good. And he's got some new tricks. Now, Yoshi's still Yoshi, okay? If you are somehow unaware, he's an odd boy. Now, he's a very odd boy. Uh, doing pogos, becoming a one-man helicopter. He's got a lot of crazy stances, right? Uh, he's always been the weirdo. Every fighting game has a weirdo, right? That's just how fighting games work. He's the weirdo of Tekken. And the thing about this time around is the weirdo, uh, he's got some fun new tricks. So of all the stances he's had, you know, he's got like sheath stance, which does its own thing. Uh, you know, he has the uh, pogo stance. He's got, you know, the flying stance. He has meditation stances that can do all fun things like teleports. He always had the one stance, which was kind of the most boring of them all. The no sword stance, right? That's the one that really got improved this time around. Because no sword stance, gives him big health stealing power-ups. Let me show you a move like up back one plus two. Cool, like it's a big old sword swing, right? You're swinging that sword, you want it to look cool, it looks cool. But if you do the move in no sword stance, it'll take the sword out. Oh, that looked nastier for some reason. What's going on there? So for one, the move normally does 25 damage and no sword stance, it does 39 damage. It gets actually a gigantic buff. And as you can see too, like the hit effects different. There's a cinematic camera angle, but also look on Yoshi himself. You may notice there's a little bit of green. It actually heals him. Like his healing stances he's had. And if you don't know, uh, he can heal himself by doing his little yoga stances, by the way. And this comes specifically from the no sword stance. Basically every time you put the sword back into its sheath on several pretty key and pretty big moves when you call it back out, it's gonna gain like a demonic bonus. It's gonna do more damage and steal health this time around. So let's take a look at the string here. So three, two, one plus two. All right, cool little sword swing, right? In no sword stance, three, two, one plus two. Oh, more damage, bigger effect, got the lifesteal. 
All thanks to the fact we were in no sword stance. How about something as basic as down one? Just a little sword swing, right? Put ourselves in no sword stance. Now down one. Now it did more damage and it knocked the enemy down. It was not a knockdown before. In no sword stance, it is. So, so many big sword moves get big buffs now in no sword stance. That's like kind of the big selling point of Yoshi in Tekken 8. And of course, once again, Yoshi has a lot of the classic stuff. Like, you know, backfist, sure. And can you still backfist yourself silly and fall over? You betcha. Can you still do like little teleport sidesteps at the cost of your health? You better believe it. And keep in mind too, Yoshi is a character that can get health back. That's just a deal. And of course, while you're trying to get punishes on him for being, you know, ignorant and trying to steal health, he'll blast you in the face. Can he still stab himself through the stomach to get an unblockable? You betcha. And don't worry. He'll keep going as many times as it takes, even if it cost him all of his life. But don't worry. Even though he's definitely an oddball, he's still fundamentally sound in a lot of other areas. Like stuff like the generic down 4 2 launcher. He's the recipient of one of the very few safe unblock launchers in the game, right? So if he goes for it, nothing happens, he's not going to get punished. That's a pretty rare trait. It works out pretty good for him. And on top of all the silliness it has, of course, heat mode, right? So heat mode, as you can see now, the sword is glowing like blood red, right? So all the benefits we get from no sword stance, they're all just live all the time. And that helps out a lot. Like say helicopter one, it's a bounce. It's a combo starter in heat mode. Normally, when you're doing your fun little helicopter, you do one, just splats him in the ground, right? We unlock the power of the demon sword, then all of a sudden things just start getting a lot more real, because that's just the kind of guy Yoshi is, right? So, yeah, um, he gets exceptionally deadly in heat. Everyone's dangerous in heat, but Yoshi, I feel just a little bit more than most. Because so many attacks gain different properties, uh, specifically with the sword, while he's in heat mode, because, you know, that just radiates bad energy. You know it's bad just by looking at it. It's going to be rough. It's a scary sword. So if you're looking for all the classic Yoshi shenanigans, let's put it that way, right? If you want all that kind of stuff, it's still all there. Don't worry. Yoshi's still a freak and a weirdo. But if you also want some new tricks, uh, no sword stance, uh, getting a little sassy with gigantic demonic sword blade attacks and all that and lifesteal, pretty cool. This version of Yoshi, I feel, is one of the best versions of Yoshi. Asuka Kazama. Asuka, very popular character, uh, mostly for two big reasons, I would say. But uh, she's pretty good for beginners. Actually, uh, if you are a true beginner, actually, she's one of the characters I would recommend for you. Because she has a pretty simple game plan, some really interesting options. And if you just want to play it just nice, safe, and easy, she's a great character for it. So everyone loves their basic launcher combo, right? You get something in the air, you juggle them. Awesome. That's kind of the essence of Tekken. You want to do your juggles? And the one thing about that for Asuka is her juggles, like her generic launcher, uh, she has one of the very few safe launchers in the game. And it's actually safer than a lot of the other characters have safe launchers, which is great. And uh, that's kind of the case for a lot of things. Like one, two, one plus two. It's a crumple, right? And it's a mid and it's a completely safe crumple. Like it's negative nine, you lost your turn, but you're not gonna get punished. So safe launcher, safe crumple, like, if you want to start big combo offense, she has a lot of safe ways to do it. Like, more safe launchers as well. Uh, down 3 plus 4 is a double giant hop kick here. And the thing is, uh, the first hit connects as a low. Second is blockable high if you didn't block the low. But if it hits as a counter hit, it's a gigantic launcher. And by itself, it's negative 8, so it's completely safe on block if you block it, right? And it's also a hop, so it goes over lows. So it's a good panic move if you smell a low. So it's another safe launcher. Another good evasive move that benefits very well from the counter hit, uh, something like back one. So it's very low to the ground, so highs will go over its head. And if it ever connects as the counter hit, it actually goes into a canned hit grab animation and she'll break your leg. And you're a fan of violence. And if you're playing a fighting game, you probably are. That's a pretty sick move. Other things good for beginners, just really good range on some moves here, like down back three, very far reaching low, taps people's toes from ranges that most people aren't comfortable from getting hit by. Four two, uh, the Kazama Classic. Uh, this one's not a safe launcher, just so you know, but uh, it is a launcher and it hits from very far away. If anyone whiffs any button in your face, you're only one forward two away from giving them the mega launcher and getting a full combo. Also good for beginners, uh, she has some easy plus frame access, right? So four four is a full circle, so tracking, high and if it's blocked it's plus three and it's a little under 20 frames so not too bad four forward one the big old uh dummy slam here so this is a mid 
So can't duck that bad boy. 23 frames. And if it's blocked, plus 5. So we can definitely get the pressure just going and seeing how it goes. Also, it's very plus when it connects. So we can actually link moves after the fact. So it can kind of become like its own little mini can combo with some pretty appreciable damage. And besides that, she is indeed Asuka Kazama. So therefore has a lot of the Kazama moveset. So we're talking like cartwheels and the launchers, all that kind of stuff. And of course, the counter. So Asuka has like the longest, most active counter in the game, which sometimes can be a bad thing because if they didn't do anything and you're just doing this in front of their face, you're probably going to get blown up. The stance is very forgiving. It just kind of auto counters all highs and mids. As long as something comes your way and it's just not a low or a throw, Asuka will blow you up for it. Once again, the timing for this is uh, much more generous than everyone else in the game, basically. So uh, you don't, you can be a little sloppy with it, basically. And if you get the reward, you still get the reward, right? So you did the right thing in the end. So if you're looking for a very generous counter stance, very generous defensive stance, Asuka definitely has it. So new to Asuka in this game specifically is a buff. Naniwa Gusto. So you can get this buff from certain moves and you can see here, her hands are glowing. And when the hands are glowing, that means she gets a one shot supercharged move and a couple different moves. Like say up one plus two. Basically becomes like power dunk from Terry Bogard, right? Uh, normally it looks something like that, but when the buff is live, uh, it certainly gets a lot more flashy and a lot more damaging. The real fun thing about this, though, is if you can get this move to connect with someone that's currently on the ground, then it'll force them into like out my back state and you can get some guaranteed hits. Out my back. OK, whatever. Eat my boot. Right. So it gives you combo opportunities you wouldn't otherwise get. Now, there's some more, but this is part where we're going to get into it here. When you're in the heat mode, she always has to buff up no matter what. So she always has access to these moves and other moves are like Big F off Captain Kirk power fists. Or even more big F off, just running punches and just devastating the enemy. Which is even more plus on block, by the way. So they can serve as pressure or combos. Once again, the buff's not always up. You might get it normally throughout the course of the match every now and then. It is always online when you have heat mode. And when you exit heat mode, by the way, you'll always have the buff as well. So even when heat mode is done, even if you've used it a few times, you'll still have one more use left. So make it count. Like if you got a labeler on anything, um, like her quick basic quick moves are kind of jank. Like her uh, quick jab pressure is not good. Uh, her damage from quick jabs also not good. Definitely not best in class, let's put it that way. But uh, she's got a little bit of something for everybody, right? Like nothing she has is best in class, I guess. But she's got serviceable launchers, uh, serviceable lows. We'll go down back three, down uh, one plus two, right? Also splats the enemy, that's always handy, right? But the thing is, she's just very forgiving, right? If you're scared and just panicking, like she's got a lot of good panic buttons to just to hit and see how things go. Uh, very forgiving in that like all of her crumples and launchers, almost all of them are safe on block, which is really handy, right? So uh, as far as like an ease of use character goes, Asuka is definitely one of the easier characters to use in Tekken. So if you're looking for that, and if you're just looking for like ignorant karate girl, because she's basically a country bumpkin, right? She ain't got no learning compared to like the elegant Lily. If you're looking for that kind of character, Asuka is it. Now, Claudio Serafino. For those of you out there that live your life by, is this a JoJo's reference? For him, actually a little bit, yeah. So he's an exorcist and frankly, let's just call for what it is. He's the game's wizard. Why is he a wizard? Well, uh, he has this thing called the Starburst. That's uh, his buff. And when he has Starburst, things like lasers start happening, right? So yeah, that's why he's the wizard. Now, I don't want to take away from the main event here because like he has a lot of really interesting moves. He's got a really good sidestep sweep. That's really good. Back one is frankly ridiculous. It's full tracking, no sidestepping, long range, knocks down on hit. Safe on block and create some pushback as well, right? So depending on where you hit it from further away, it's more and more and more safe on block. Just it's a good spamble ignorant move. He has uh, one of the best hop kicks in the game. 15 frames, gigantic launch, gigantic hitbox. Works out really good, really good launcher, just fantastic. Like he has fundamentally some good buttons. Also, he has one of the shorter move lists in the game. So if you are intimidated by bigger move lists, his isn't that big. 
But the main thing is Starburst, and things like Run 2 help with that a lot, because Run 2 is a fantastic move, and if it connects, it gives you the Starburst state. Run 2 also very good, because even if the opponent blocks, you are very advantaged on block. So they block, that sucks, but it's your turn. And if it hits, great, because it gives you Starburst. And many things can give you Starburst, like say the 2-1-2 two, two string, that gives you Starburst. 3-2 as well, Heat Engager 2 gives Starburst. Back 4-2, also a Heat Engager, also gives Starburst. Lots of moves give Starburst, because Starburst in a lot of ways is the main event. Why is it the main event? Well, lasers for one. Lasers are pretty handy to have, right? Uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> also moves like forward 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2. Gives a guy gigantic spin out state. Which naturally enough, you can combo from, right? That's just part of the beauty of it. Gives you access to down 1, 2, which launches the enemy heavily if it connects. And if it's blocked, big time plus frames and chip damage. Things like down back 1 plus 2, which is just a gigantic launcher. And it is barely negative on block. Minus 2 with pushback with chip damage. So a uh, low consequence launcher to say the least. It even gives you a better version of your running punch. Like it gives you a lot. A lot of the crazy moves are from Starburst and the whole game plan is sort of around that. Yeah, he's got a lot of really good, really serviceable normals, but building the buff, burning the buff, that is kind of the name of the game for Claudio. So add in once again, the solid fundamental stuff. So like run two is really good hop kick. He's so annoying down back three because he like moves upwards before he moves down, which always makes me think it's a high or a mid, you know, like I should stand block because I play too many 2D fighting games, I guess, right? And then always ends up alone, I always get hit. But yeah, so deceptive low, I guess. Just good at controlling space as well. Like between run two, which we already talked about, he also has 444, which is just a monstrously long range knee. As you can see there, it hits from very far away. Also barely negative on block, which is great. And big time reward on counter hit. Because you can get some guaranteed damage from there slap people around, gain the starburst state, and just go nuts from there. So if you're looking to play a stylish karate wizard, Claudio is that guy. Now the bears. Some people are gonna come at you and say, the bears, they're the same character. And that, those people are fools, frankly. Like, is there only one move that's different between the two characters at all and everything else is the same? Yeah, sure. But there's a spirit to the bear. A Kuma main is not the same as a Panda main. They're looking for different things in life. But regardless if you're a Kuma person or a Panda person, you're still in my good books because the bears are where it's at. Now we'll cover the one specific difference here at the end of the section. But let's talk about the bears in general, right? So the bears are big. And uh, the thing is, like we talked about in the Jack section, big doesn't necessarily mean slow. In the bears case, big means slow. They're not particularly fast. <laughs> And uh, just like Jack 2, they're very wide. So uh, their ability to sidestep is suspect compared to the average character. But here's the benefit of this. So they're big, they're slow, they can't move so good. Okay, but they also remove the opponent's ability to move so good. What do I mean by this? The bears have bear range. <laughs> Basically, they're some of the just longest range attacks in the game across the board, whatever they may be. Like, like, Something as simple as like a low poke, right? Like a low poke from this far away, no dice for anyone else. For a bear, that's Tuesday, no big deal, right? So a bear can't move so good, but when you're just looking to avoid basic hits, when you're looking to avoid just not getting poked out, you're not gonna find that same luck against a bear because you're just not gonna be able to move away fast enough and not get tapped, right? So their movement sucks, but due to their extreme range of their moves, it also kind of mitigates the opponent's movement just a little bit. Like the generic launcher, bears are hitting that from way beyond anyone else's range. Let's put it that way. Also, it makes some exceptional whiff punishing moves. Maybe they can't get, you know, out of move so good, but whenever a move does whiff, you better believe at pretty much any possible given range, a bear will be able to punish it because their launchers uh, is gotta be the longest in the game, bar none. So big buttons, big pokes, Big launchers, big lows. They got a lot going on from not the least of which is a new mechanic in this game. So the bears have chargeable moves where you hold the button and the longer you hold it, eventually you'll see that gigantic flash and the move just gets wildly better. 
Uh, for one, it can do a lot more damage, and that's a lot of damage from a low, as you can see, right? Uh, and even if you block it, normally any block low of that nature, that's a free punish, right? Ah, it's just negative four. So, like, you better low parry it or get out of the way with a jump or something. And this is across several strings, like down back one, two. So on its own, just quick double slap, right? Uh, the two though, if you hold two, it can get real big. As you can see here, it's plus on block and does a lot of chip damage. Also, this is one of the things about the bears. Bears do a lot more chip damage than the average character, which makes sense. They're bears after all, right? So this gives you a very uh, damaging plus on block mid that does chip. And by the way, all the moves that have the charge effect, if you're in heat, the charge comes much faster, by the way. Bear damage also, in my opinion, is higher than the rest of the cast. Uh, something like uh, back forward two, right? If you eat the counter hit version of back forward two, you go flying. And it's not too hard considering, you know, it's a 15 frame move with incredible range, right? Uh, and also, hey, it's pretty safe on block the boot. What's not the love there? And if you eat this bad boy as a counter hit, even from like, you know, incredible range, right? Like this is in no way like some special scenario, some special combo, right? Look at the damage on that. Look, it's almost 90 damage. I didn't burn any resources. I wasn't near a corner. There was no gimmicks. There was no weird, like the right side of stage. This was just a basic combo. It was almost 90 damage. It's not some magical Christmas land scenario. Well, like on average, when you optimize your combos, I feel the bears will just do a little bit more damage than what else. And of course, that's because they have downsides, right? They're bears, they're big. They will be able to be hit by combos no other character can. They will be able to be hit by moves no other character can in weird situations. Like their legs. <laughs> Look at these kicks. Horong or Lee. The bears are not. Their kicks are a little anemic, right? Let's talk in some negatives, right? Let's talk some more fun bear things. Like the bears inherited quite a few of Heihachi's moves. Like the uh, palm. The... Mishima Uppercut, right? And Kuma specifically has a fun thing in Heat to talk about, so that's good. And we also have Hunting Bear Stance. Fair enough, you're a bear. So Hunting Bear Stance gives you a lot of fun new moves, right? Uh, it can give you some good mids, give you some decent lows, gives you an unbreakable command grab. So when you're worrying about saying, uh, you know, sidestepping the mid, if you try to sidestep, get grabbed and bit instead, that's pretty cool. And bears also love to roll around. That's one of the things bears really love to do. And from roll around stance, you can do some silly stuff, right? Like, you know, mids, lows, already some can mix there. Or from rolls, you can splat people or you can launch them. There's some options there. Bears do silly stances, like sitting stance, right? So you can sit down on the ground, be a little lazy boy bear, and basically kind of force some mix, right? Am I gonna go low? Am I gonna go mid and launch? Like even sitting around has its benefits as a bear. So the bears are actually exceptional, like way better than average at fighting while on the ground. I mean like on the ground, like you got knocked down on the ground, like you're splatted out. So if you're face forward, stomach down, if you hit one plus two, Kuma can go low on you and transitions to his hunting bear stance. Now conversely, if you are face forward, stomach up, that same move, one plus two, becomes a mid. So you as the opponent actually have to know, is this a mid or a low? Because you have to pay attention to which way Kuma is. Because if you don't know, you're gonna get hit. If your stomach up face away and hit down one plus two, it comes a giant slam. And if you're close enough, actually it's very plus on block and then you get up, right? So he's got a lot of options to work with. Like it's already rare for a character to have like an extra move while they're knocked down, right? Besides the universal stuff. And Kuma's got like three things uh, depending on all the positions he's at. So that's actually a pretty strong trait overall. Compared to older games, you can even say it's nerfed because uh, it'll always transition into hunting bear stance now. Uh, some people could win whole games just kind of flopping on their belly and hitting people while stuck on the ground. So now you always go into stance. But yeah, you're a bear. You do bear things. That should be a selling point in and of itself, but let's talk the one thing here, the differential between Kuma and Panda. They each get one new move. For Kuma specifically, these are both heat only, uh, Kuma gets the Wind God Fist. So Kuma doesn't get the electric Wind God Fist. No, he gets something better. He gets the fresh Wind God Fist, as you can see here, right? And also, this is a chargeable move like he had uh, 
with several of his other moves. So it's down four, two plus three. If you charge it, big old launch. Big old launch, right? And if you just do it regularly, quick launch. So like other Mishima electric moves, you better believe, yes, sir, this is indeed a launcher, right? You're gonna get some pretty respectable damage in from here. Not bad at all. And just like electrics from the Mishimas, better believe this bad boy's plus on block. And you can get a decent amount of these in while you're in heat mode. So you can kind of spam it a little bit, right? So that's really cool. And if they wait their turn, start poking low. Also, by the way, have bear sweep. Bear sweep has been changed quite a bit. So it's now much faster. It's effectively unseeable. Uh, if it connects, you get a solid 20 damage. Not bad at all for a low. And you get pretty respectable plus frames. And if it connects as a counter hit, boom, it's a launcher. So, uh... Yeah, it's not doing bad. It's doing pretty all right. So yeah, Bear Sweep, not doing bad at all. It's doing pretty all right in my books. But the thing is, unlike the weaker, inferior Mishima Electric, the th uppercut for Kuma is fresh. And what does that mean? It means uh, it has one key advantage. It's a special mid, not a high. So one of the benefits here of hunting bear stance is when you're hunting bear stance, highs go over your head. That's just kind of how it works, right? Now the fresh wind bear fist is no high. So it'll hit people that are trying to low profile moves. Now it is a special mid. Special mid means even though it is indeed a mid, you can crouch block it. But in any other situation where you're low profiling someone, it'll connect because it's still a mid, right? The only difference is a special mid can be crouch blocked. So compared to a regular electric, a regular electric is always a high and can never, ever, ever hit someone who is crouching or in a low profile stance or whatever. Oh, look at me, I'm Reina. I wish I could hit a bear. Oh wait, my inferior non-bear electric won't hit mid, so I can never hit the bear. The bear freshness makes it just simply more powerful than electric. No, of course, partially I'm joking here. Obviously electrics have their own benefits. They're faster. You don't need to be in heat mode, right? You can just kind of go, right? But still for a bear, generally the bears are like, usually hanging around bottom tier in every game they're in, right? That's a pretty powerful move. And then Kuma's doing pretty all right. Now that's Kuma. What about Panda? Panda gains the shooting star. So Shooting Star is a multi-hitting move here, and they're all mids. And if it connects, it leaves you in a favorable state. So it's not quite the launcher like Kuma, but you're in the sitting state specifically, and you're just directly on top of them, you know, ready to mix them up, right? Am I going low or am I going mid? You kind of got to guess right away. Also, when it comes to the block advantage, it's terrifically advantage on block, plus 12. Also does a good amount of chip damage as well. And the thing specifically here, because it leaves you in sitting state, you can do the roll from sitting state. And roll in heat mode actually has a hitbox. And roll also is plus on block too. So it makes it extra deadly because here's another fun trait. Roll one. Normally, plus on block, high, that's nice. However, in heat mode, roll one is a guard break. At least to guarantee damage you cannot escape. So to give you an idea of what's possible with Panda here, right? We can go in the Shooting Star, roll one, guard break, boom, boom. And uh, if you are not aware of what's up, that could be a game over situation. Because uh, you take the guard break, that's guaranteed damage. Now it's not inescapable by any means, right? If you know the roll, guard break's coming in as a high, you could duck it, right? But then again, you can go roll two and that's a mid launcher. So if you ducked it, you're going flying, right? Uh, it puts the opponent in an incredible state of pressure. So Kuma heat mode is more of a sledgehammer. Panda heat mode is more of a surgical knife. So there's something for everybody in the bears. The bear players are generally considered like a certain kind of person. Uh, <laughs> uh, the bears probably still won't be good in this game. Hey, maybe things will change. I got some pretty interesting new tools this time around. But if you're playing bears, you're probably in for a silly time. You know what? That's great because engineering silly gameplay engineering silly situations and well frankly just mauling people to death with bites this is what the bears are all about so if this sounds good you might be a bear player
Now, when it comes to Brian, I'm sure you watching like, okay, Rufamonger, I'm impressed. There's devils, there's karate wizards and all that. But what I need is a zombie cyborg heavily inspired by Rutger Hauer's character in Blade Runner. And well, you're in luck, my friend, because that's exactly what Brian is. Now, Brian's interesting just because the level of power he has has kind of solidified. Like there's many archetypes of moves in this game. And the thing is, a lot of the archetypes and moves in this game are all named after Brian's moves because they're that good, right? So let's take something like the Snake Edge. He has the Snake Edge. Like, let's go into the move list, right? So here we are, Snake Edge. So all these myriad of moves that are called Snake Edge, this is the Snake Edge. It is a low hitting launcher. Little slow on the edge of reactability, you can catch it, right? But if you don't, you're going flying and getting comboed. What about the orbital? Orbital heel kick, right? So this is a leaping launcher as well. And it catches you, bad luck. It goes over lows very easily, and if he catches you, well, it's combo time, and you're gonna get beaten some crap, basically. Also, given that it's just a little slower startup, completely safe on block to boot. So safe launchers, we like those here. So he has core moves that literally the archetype of moves are named after, so big deal, right? Uh, he also has something famous you might have heard of, his taunt. So lots of characters have taunts, right? That's nothing new. His taunt also now inflicts the new snake eye state, which we'll talk about in a little bit, as you see those little glowing red arms. But the one thing about his taunt that's a little different than everyone else, his taunts an unblockable strike. Now it doesn't do damage by itself, but what's really cool is the moment it hits, you can cancel that hit into anything you want. So for example here, Yoshi set to block literally everything, including this string we're gonna try out here, of up two, 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 three. So I can't hit him, he's set to block everything. But if we do our taunt, and then I cancel the hit of the taunt into up two in the string, let's see how that goes. Oh, it's all guaranteed now. Pretty sick. Now, 23 damage. Normally does more than that, but there's scaling involved. Like, you've got a free combo from an unblockable attack, right? You can take what you get. Like, a little scaling is fine. Now, the thing about this is the timing is actually fairly strict. Like, you have to cancel the connecting knee, like, literally when it connects. If you do it just a bit too early, you'll go into whatever move too early and then get nothing. If you do it too late, the frame advantage will be gone, and either the move is simply too late, or it just won't come out at all. This is uh, one of the aspects of Brian where execution is very high. Brian is one of the highest execution characters in the game, specifically because of this technique, because it's so strong. Like, one of the things you can do, and it has to be literally frame perfect, you can go for this unblockable knee and cancel it into his forward back to launcher. This is the jet upper. And if you ever heard taunt jet upper, this is exactly what the technique is. So he can hit you with the unblockable, launch you with jet upper, and get a full combo, let alone, you know, you saw just like a stray hit there before, right? He can get an entire grand combo off of it. Now, normally, I'm very bad at execution, I'm not gonna lie, right? I wouldn't spend the time to show you this in a video and do like a thousand takes, but today, well, today will be no exception. Find someone better than me, right? Because I suck at this, like, I'm not good enough to do it. I'm not fast enough because it literally has to be truly frame perfect. But if you can do it, hey, it's pretty good. Now, besides that, Brian's just a grab bag of like excellent moves like stand three, four, just monstrous big old poke. Not much else to be said about it, even though by the numbers is technically punishable at the pushback. If it gets blocked, like no one's punishing that right. Negative 13 from that far away is just for the most part not happening. So just really good dominant poke. And an uh, ongoing theme for the character. If it's a counter hit, it's a crumple. And if it's a crumple, you better believe that means it is indeed a combo starter. So, got that working out for you, right? So, good poke. If it gets counter hit, let's go. Keeping that in mind here, like stuff like back one. Back one is so ignorant. It's so good. Uh, also, a pretty long range move, 20 frames. And if it connects, plus seven. And if it's blocked, plus four. Like, the relative speed of the move for the amount of plus frames it gives you and the range it has is just absolutely ignorant. It's an amazing move to be just belligerent with. Brian is also a character with a backsway stance. Uh, and, you know, he's got a lot of serviceable things from it. Uh, big pokes. Uh, backsway 4 is just a launcher. And it's a big launcher. Uh, backsway 3, 
Just very good, difficult to deal with. Low, uh, does over 20 damage at very fast speeds and leaves you very advantage on hit. That's all really good stuff. And also, on counter hit, it will splat the enemy. Now, unlike older games where it was like literally combo town, you're not getting the same combo because it doesn't launch the same way, but you'll still get some guaranteed damage after the fact, so it's still very good. Now, let's talk Snake Eyes. So, a bunch of moves give Snake Eyes. His taunt gives Snake Eyes. This is where his uh, arms are glowing. As far as I can tell, as a zombie cyborg, I think it's literally just like him overheating or something. But when he has this, he gains all new moves. Like uh, something like 442. He still has 442, but he kind of has like an uh, enhanced version of it if you want to do Ford Ford 1 plus 2. And it'll just give you a big old flaming punch and send you on your way. Like we talked about how good 3 plus 4 is. He actually gets a follow up on Snake Eyes. He gets 3 plus 4, 2. And it's another big flaming punch to send you on your way. Other strings get better, like that up 2 string we talked about. You get more hits off of it. He gains some all new strings here where he just also goes to town on you. And it is one of those deals where you're in heat mode, just like a lot of other characters, when you're in heat mode, you just get the buff. So you don't gotta build to it, you don't gotta earn it, you just get it, right? So it just literally gives you more options than you otherwise would have. And just a note real quick too, uh, forward forward two, you know, classic Brian move, right? Negative on block, uh, forward forward one plus two, while you have snake eyes, plus on block, with a lot of chip damage. Like look how much chip damage that is. Also, while you're doing the move, there's a bit of a revenge mechanic. Like, if you get hit out of it, you tank the hit and just blast the enemy. It's not necessarily, like, a power crush move. It's just its own unique thing. So it's a very much a signature move uh, while you have the snake eyes open. So Brian's just a fundamentally sound character. He's got a lot of really good strings, a lot of really good normals. Uh, just a lot of really good stuff. Once again, a lot of core base mechanics of the game are named after Brian's moves, right? So that's why you know Brian's good. And add that with like the unblockable taunt gimmicks and all that kind of stuff. Unblockable taunt into launcher. If you're good enough, I'm not. I can do electrics. I can't do that. Uh, but yeah, Brian's just got a grab bag, a lot of cool things, right? So if that sounds like it's good to you, Brian's the guy. June Kazama. So this is June's first canonical appearance since Tekken 2. Uh, and that was a long time ago in the 90s. So it's been a while for June. Now, part of June is the classic Kazama move set. So she's got the backflips, right? She's got the 4-2. She has the Haran kicks, where she does all sorts of fun little uh, intricate strings, right? So all the Kazama stuff is still there, but uh, a couple things have changed over the years. So we talked Claudio, right? If Claudio is the wizard, then June is the cleric. Now, why is she the cleric? Because, yo... Uh, she's tossing out these pillars of light like nobody's business. And this is across a heck of a lot of moves. Uh, she can just kind of toss these bad boys out and you gotta deal with them. And, uh, it's actually a very unique mechanic because unlike a lot of other characters, health is a resource for June. June, uh, can inflict an incredible, like, top level amount of chip damage on the character, but to do so, She's also draining her own life. All these pillar attacks, all these beam attacks. Look at June's life here. Recoverable damage, right? So she's hurting herself while hurting the opponent. Now rest assured, all these pillar attacks, they do good chip damage on the opponent, right? So it's not like a, a zero sum deal here. She will be hurting the opponent regardless, but on some of these, she's hurting herself more. Now, of course, we mentioned her being a cleric, right? What do clerics do? They heal. So she has a healing stance. While she's in the stance, she will just consistently heal herself. And as a stance, there's also all sorts of attacks from it, right? Including fun little lasers. So, you know, a little bit of a ranged offense as well, right? Now, of course, a lot of characters have very special relationships with the heat stance for her while she's in heat mode. All these gigantic laser attacks no longer deal any self damage. They still hurt. Like hell, they still deal lots of chip to the enemy, but you, you're good. And it's not like they drain the heat meter either. As you see, I'm just spamming this move, right? And uh, no heat's being drained, which makes certain moves actually uh, extra deadly, like forward, forward, one plus two. Uh, quick enough for what it is, mid plus on block, right? And uh, deals a good amount of chip damage, deals damage to you too. But when you're in heat mode, all of a sudden, that's not really a concern. 
Now I'm dealing tons of chip with a lot of plus frames to the enemy, and like, I'm not losing out. So this is a situation where they desperately have to react quickly and do something because it's not a tenable situation, right? So your turbocharge moves are fantastic with a giant downside, but in heat mode, it's all upside, zero downside. Also, speaking of heat mode, her heat smash, it's a big old laser with some uh, devil birds, right? And also it does a lot of self healing. So it's got good range to begin with and it heals you, right? So it gets you back some of that damage you dealt yourself. Also, she has uh, her stance from Tekken Tag 2, and this also has its own heat smash built into it, right? It's a different, separate heat smash. So while you're doing it and going to heat, you actually get a quick low attack. So you get two heat attacks. One's a big old laser with birds that heals you. Awesome. And the other one's a tricky low from a stance. That does pretty respectable damage for a low, right? So having multiple heat smashes, always good. She's got two. Now let's talk some oddities about June, right? So outside of the weirdness of how she exists already, right? In uh, stealing health from herself to damage the enemy. Uh, she has a couple of fundamental differences from the rest of the cast. One, her down four two, the generic launcher, right? So it still launches like everybody, but hers is unlike almost everybody else, 16 frames, which means in uh, guaranteed punch situations of negative 15, which is kind of a magic number, she can't do it. She can't do it. 16 and up, sure, right? But a lot of situations where some people get big guaranteed damage, she can't. It's not that she doesn't have a 15 frame move, because she has a down back one, one, one plus two, and that does all right damage for what it is, right? Not bad, uh, but also self damages you. It's one of those kind of moves, and it does 45, which is almost certainly much less than any launch combo. But now I'm not here to doom and gloom you, because there's actually a massive upside. So her 15 frame punish game, not good. Well, it's all, it's all right, but it's not great, right? But her 10 frame punish game, you know, basic jab, she has a special 10 frame move, this up forward one. And right there, it doesn't look like much, right? But I want you to look at this. It's gonna deal self damage, but I want you to look at the damage it deals to the enemy. 36, 36 for a 10 frame punish. Yeah, self damage, I know, but that's ridiculous. I, I don't, know the exact numbers i haven't checked every single number of the game but i think this might be the single most damaging 10 frame punish in the game right 10 frames is the fastest a punish can be if it's nine frames or lower there's no guaranteed punish 10 frames and up that's punish time right and this does a tremendous amount of damage for a 10 frame move so if you do something as innocuous as a 10 frame punishable move while your back's to the wall she can like end your life for it right so that's pretty big and if you're worried about the health, you can also just put a heat burst in there and do your heat smash, gain your health back, right? So that's an option. So her 15 frame punish game, eh. Her 10 frame punish game, amazing. And kind of rounding things out, uh, she is a Kazuma once again. So we talked about some of the Kazuma moves, but she also has the parry. Asuka's lasts longer. This one you have to time a little bit more, but you know, if you like parrying fools, she's still one of the best in town at it. So yeah, June, very interesting character, right? The classic chasm stuff's still there. All these like holy bolts of smiting people, doing so much chip damage, but stealing your health. That's really cool. The fact that she has like stances and mechanics to regain that health. And of course she has like a lot of stances as well. Uh, the Tekken Tag 2 stance. Uh, we have this stance here from up to us, uh, pretty sassy with some interesting options out of it. So there's some trickiness there, but yeah, June, very cool and very interesting character in this game. Okay, martial law. Here's an easy sell. Yo, do you like Bruce Lee? If you like Bruce Lee, yo, this is the Bruce Lee character. I think that's kind of an easy sell around the game, right? There's all sorts of Bruce Lee things. The legendary flying kick. We got that. Actually new Tekken 8, as there's a lot more weapon use in Tekken 8, we're busting out the nunchucks this time around. And uh, one of the beauties of Law, specifically in this game, in heat mode, those nunchucks come full launchers and get a lot better. Also, just to quickly note here, speaking as a launcher, uh, they also get a lot safer. And heat mode, it's a safe launcher. Nice. And speaking of heat mode too, the heat smash. <laughs> uh, he just goes to town on you. Visually, it's one of the most impressive ones. So besides the Bruce Lee stuff, right? What's to sell you on law? Well, one, he's one of the few characters with a safe on block launcher. That's good. 
2, he's got a pretty appreciable poke game. Uh, things like down back 3, it's really good. Uh, very fast for what it is. Decent damage, decent plus frames. It's not uh, super punishable on block. General pokey stuff like forward 1 plus 2, plus on block, very handy. If it connects, forces crouch. On counter hit, just a big old bounce, guaranteed combo. You like the flippy stuff? Yo, uh, he's got the flippy stuff, let's put it that way. You can also tie some of that flippy stuff with stand 4. So you can go like 4-3-4, that's canned string, or like 4 up 3, and it has a big somersault flip. And the beauty is, the big somersault flip is a mid, and it's also completely safe on block. So it's going to be mildly annoying to deal with. Usually the highs come later in the strings, right? And if it happens to connect, it gives a good knockdown, right? So he can follow up after the fact. So will he, won't he just keep following up? Will he, won't he just be annoying with the fact here? That's kind of the essence of the character, right? When is it going to be your turn? And uh, really compounded with the fact of Dragon Stance, where many strings lead into Dragon Stance and then give you lots and lots of possibilities. So how do we get to the, the Dragon Stance? We have things like 4, 3, 1. So 4, 3, 1 doesn't look too impressive on its own, right? It's not even a natural combo, but... If we do it and we hold forward, we go in Dragon Stance, and that makes that plus on block if it gets blocked. You got strings like back one, two, two, where back one hold forward will put us in a Dragon Stance. Back one, two, hold forward will put us in a Dragon Stance. And once again, depending on the hit or not, it can lead to plus frames. We got easy strings like one, one, two. If we hold forward, boom, right in the Dragon Stance. Okay, so there's a lot of ways to go in Dragon Stance. So what makes Dragon Stance so cool? It's a lot of what at the heart of the character lies, because we got some pretty cool moves. Say something like Dragon Stance 1. So quick high, in and of itself, is all right, right? One of the beauties of it, though, it does chip damage and it's completely neutral on block. So if anything else, they're passive and they block, boom, free chip. Much same Dragon Stance 2. If it hits, it clobbers them. It's a little bit slower, but also chip damage, also advantage on block. Plus 1 instead of plus 0. We got full circle moves, and by the way, uh, Law's full circle coverage is actually pretty dang good here. Uh, back four, very fast for what it is, full circle coverage, and also has a can string of back four three, and it's a natural combo. So if you catch someone stepping, trying to sidestep all your uh, gimmicks and your pokes and your gigas, you can send them flying. Dragon Stance four, just quick low, just to give it some mix, right? You gotta have some mix. We can also bust out those nunchucks we talked about earlier. And just the same as in Heat, it gets a bonus. Let's bust out some of the iconic stuff here. We got the one inch punch. So this is forward slide two to one. And well, the one inch punch is pretty dang good. It's a mid and it's also quite advantage on block here. Plus five and does chip damage. As you see, it's kind of a recurring theme here, right? Uh, it's gonna keep being your turn if they block your stuff in Dragon Stance. We also have a power crush, an armored move, just in case they think about hitting buttons, you can crush them for it. But the main event is the legend kick. So forward and hit four, right kick while you're in Dragon Stance. And yeah, it's the big flying Bruce Lee kick. Like what else is there to love, right? It's ridiculously advantage on block. It smashes people. If they're anywhere near a wall, well then, hey, guaranteed combos for sure. The only downside to it is it's linear, I guess. Does chip ridiculously plus on block. It's just linear and it's a high. So it is duckable. And if you know it's coming, you can sidestep it. He also has parries. He has a generic parry, but he also has a unique punch only parry. And if you get it, well, I think it's worth the price of admission. Also in heat mode, when you enter Dragon Stance, it turns Dragon Stance into that parry. So just entering the stance itself gains defensive property in heat mode. I feel there's not too much else to say. Like, yo, do you like your Bruce Lee-isms, right? Because Law is absolutely full of them. Uh, add it. Also, he has, like, one of the best slides in the game. Not that there is many slides anyways, right? Uh, so add that to his just general uh, decent poking game and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you always have to watch your toes. Because he can hit you low from an incredible distance and you probably won't react fast enough because the actual slide itself is also lightning quick. And when you're worried about blocking low, that means you're not blocking mid. Once again, safe mid launcher, right? Kind of wraps back into itself. Uh, just good pressure, good pokes, and a lot of Bruce Lee. 
Now, let's talk Victor Chevalier, our French super spy, samurai, ninja, techno assassin, because he's a lot of things. Like, you can tell just by looking at the boy here. Uh, he's got the arsenal on him. He's carrying two knives and a samurai sword. And don't worry, you can do things like techno explosions. And don't worry, as any ninja spy, samurai, techno assassin should, he has all manner of teleports. Because that's just the kind of guy he is. Now, within the context of the lore, if you know the Ravens, Raven, Master Raven, Victor is actually the original. He's the OG. He's the one that put them all together. He's the one that taught him how it go. So as far as super spies go, well, he's got a legacy. And hey, don't worry, not the least of which, he'll just shoot your ass. Like, that's just what this character is. Like, he's got a gun, and he will absolutely use it. And unlike so many other projectiles in the game, not that there's a lot of them, his actually is full screen. And it's actually pretty quick for what it is. Like, you're not going to zone people or anything, but you absolutely can catch people sleeping at the wheel with this bad boy. And as an added bonus, it does chip damage too. It'll always shift to the stance if it connects, but like, yeah, for Tekken, this isn't bad. Not bad at all. Let's go over some of the arsenal here. Victor has a pretty decent run too. So it's a plus on block. That's always welcome. Good splat if it connects. And if it is a counter hit, it will indeed launch the enemy. And from there, all sorts of shenanigans can be done. Speaking of counter hits, I think he actually has some pretty decent counter hit lows. So he has down four, which I know doesn't look like much on paper, and down back four, which is sort of like a snake edgy style move, although it doesn't launch normally and it's a good deal faster at 20 frames. On counter hit, down four, bra, 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 just opens up on you. You know, 30 damage for a 16 frame low, that's not too bad. And for down back four, Bra, bra, bra. Shoots you again, and it's a crumple. So down back four, uh, considering there's a crumple, yeah. Like, actually, there's uh, totally combos going on here. Like, this works out. So not bad. Like, the lows themselves without the counter hits, you're not getting a lot, but the potential is there. We saw the other stance here, the samurai stance. There's some interesting things here, not the least of which, like, he'll slash you with the samurai sword and teleport to you, right? That's already pretty cool, but... Uh, some of the uh, normals here that go into the gunshot will automatically gunshot you and then go into the stance. So like two, 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 down four, four, two, and leaves you with slight advantage. Uh, the one thing I find interesting here, I think it's a little gimmicky. I don't know if this is what's intended, but I feel there's a trap on block because these moves still force to teleport on block and you're negative three, but he has answers for everything. Uh, so, stance three, on top of looking pretty cool, that's a power rush. So even the situations where I'm a little negative, like, I feel like you can just kind of power crush your way through it, so that's kind of cool. And also, the weakness of power crushes is lows, right? Well, turns out uh, he's got a pretty funny trick when it comes to the stance and lows. So he has a low parry built in. All it is, is simply tap forward, like, you know, like third strike foul. Just tap forward, and if they hit you with a low while you're tapping forward, then you will just kind of auto-parry the move and do six samurai sword into the teleport. So, uh, he's got some defensive options is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, one thing I do like, uh, this is kind of a stylistic thing, I guess, but, uh, so the stance. You notice the sheath, right? Have you ever played Metal Gear Rising, the best Metal Gear game, by the way? A very similar. And one thing I like, he has a very specific sword attack he can only do while in heat mode. And then you'll unsheath the sword and just go for like a big proper samurai strike. And if it's blocked because it's heat mode, still super advantage on block and also a good amount of chip, right? But I do like it's a move that you can only do, you know, when the desperation moment is high, you know, just very Metal Gear, right? Also, while in heat, his heat smash is a low. And it's a low with a lot of range. So, yeah, you're going to get hit by that. But yeah, Victor, knives, all sorts of knife attacks, all sorts of gun attacks, all sorts of samurai sword attacks, all sorts of teleports, all sorts of weird techno explosions. And you know, it's tech based because those are hexes, right? 
That just means technology for whatever reason. I don't know why. But yeah, cool dude. Does cool guy things. On top of that, he also has another little stance besides the sword stance where he'll just kind of get freaky with the knives. And he's got a lot of ways to transition into it. And then he can just, you know, tap you low. Got full circle moves. Got more strings that also can lead into samurai stance, right? So he can really be a blender for what he is. That's why I think he has a lot of counter hit properties. Because uh, you're probably going to have to start mashing against his offense. But yeah, really cool character. Leo Kleissen. Our resident Spelunker and also resident androgynous Baji Kwan user. Is Leo a boy? Is Leo a girl? I'm not sure. All I'll tell you is Leo's gender is violence, as Leo is the master of the Iron Mountain. Now, out of the gate, one of the unique things about Leo is they have a unique resource mechanic, a buff. Now, we've already talked about multiple characters in this video that have buffs. The difference is Leo's is their generic key charge. So their generic key charge is different than everyone else in the game in that that's where the buff lies. And when the buff is live, then all of a sudden, like all new moves, all new strings are active. The generic kind of hell sweepy style move here, down back four one. Normally, that's all she wrote. When you have this live, down back four, one, one plus two, a lot more damage. And lots of strings can benefit, like four, two, four, three, only possible with the buff live, more damage. Back three, one, two. So it just gives already existing strings an additional ender that's very powerful. And like so many other buffs in the game, when you're in heat mode, the buff's always on. So that makes it an extra handy dandy to say the least. Now, the main thing with Leo is two specific stances, the Jinji Du Li stance and Fobu. These are otherwise collectively known as K and K stance and BOK Bok stance. Leo has many moves that shift between these two stances, and the thing is, these stances have a good amount of mix-up to them. K and the K stance has unassuming things like high in the mid, but it's a heat engager, that's nice. But also then, hey, K and K3, just a straight up mid launcher. K and K4, it's a low. And also as a low, if it counter hits, it will splat you so it can pressure up. And we have even more mids, we have even more lows, right? So the 50-50 proposition is pretty decent. Box stance, much the same here. Uh, we have highs with full tracking. We got strings here that are mid launchers. We don't even need counter hit. We got even more launches, by the way. We have power crushes, right? We can even attack and shift back into K and K stance. So we can threaten you with a lot of different things and kind of keep the train flowing one stance flows into another but besides stance shenanigan leo has a lot of just solid tools like the generic launcher it's not safe like some others but it is basically the most range of a launcher that is not jack or the bears uh it has pretty substantial range so it's really good at whiff punishing other moves like full crouch down four three really good sweep down one and down two are both fantastic uh down two just good old punch by itself also, if it happens to be blocked, advantage on block. And if it happens to be a counter hit, big old launcher on counter hit. Leo also has a crouch dash. Very handy and several strings can cancel into it. And on base level, we got a low and we got mids. That's kind of all you need out of the gate, right? There's your mix right there. Also fun, fun stuff here. Uh, can cancel the mid into K and K stance. So you can cancel into that. Go low, cancel back in the crouch dash, and loop offense, loop offense. So Leo, other than some of the stance trickery, I think is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, just kind of bulldogs in, has a bunch of good normals, has uh, the unique mechanic that uh, just powers up very powerful moves, right? Like a 40 damage health sweep. Hey, what's not to like, right? So if you just like a well-rounded character and also shouldering people to death, because that is the essence of Baji Kwan as far as I'm concerned, then Leo is that character. Now let's go into Horong. This is our Taekwondo master and a very tricky character. So one, Horong is a stance character for sure. Uh, so much so that we can do the stance dance. So if you like doing stance dances, hey, well, there we go, right? So what do we got for Horong here? We have, well, regular, sure. We have left flamingo stance. We have right flamingo stance. We have right foot forward stance. 
And we also do have back turn stance, although that doesn't matter as much. But yeah, so from these stances, Horong's pressure is combo, like everything just flows freely. He can smother you because everything can transition into everything else. And you're going to have to guess, guess, guess. Like just to give you a basic idea of the blender, right? One quick example. So down three, four, just a quick low, like down three, 17 frame. Like you're not blocking this on the action. You'd have to guess, right? And this puts you directly into right flamingo stance. And naturally enough, also a good amount of plus frames, right? So here's where the blender begins. Like layer one, okay, we have just regular old mid, right? This is kind of the most boring option, but we have regular old mid, keeps you honest, a little negative. But now say we do forward four. This is a double hitting high and plus 10 on block. So basically, if you try to be honest about this, this might as well be an infinite, right? Like you have to duck, you have to do something. And then once again, you have the regular honest mid, right? But we also got like dishonest mid. It's like down forward four. So this is a big old ax kick, right? So a little slower, but we already have a lot of plus frames here. And this also is plus one on block. Not a lot to be plus by, but it's enough to make sure you win the jab war if it comes down to that. The axe kick here, mid, decent enough on hit. That works out. Also, if it catches you mashing, boom, we get a launcher. We get a full combo, right? So now you're not incentivized to mash. And if you're not incentivized to mash, well, then we're just kind of back at square one, right? And don't worry, we got plenty more mids and all that kind of stuff too, right? And naturally enough here, we got some lows to work with as well. In some interesting flavors here. Uh, not all of them are natural strings, but there's a lot of them to work with, right? So we have a lot of plus on block moves, some incredibly plus on block. We got multiple mids. The one mid that's also plus on block, if you dare hit a button when we're already plus on, you know, plus frames, it's gonna crumple you and get a combo. And we got additional mids besides that. We got low, like, it's just a blender. And that's one stance from one very basic situation. And we got a lot more. Not the least of which also we can throw you while we're doing this, while we're in right flamingo stance. And we also have an armored power crush as well, just in case we believe you might have a move that might beat us. So we can shut you down. Also, actually just a note here on throws, Horong is uh, oddly proficient in throws. He has actually access to all three throw breaks. So like he's not king or anything, but he can chuck you around. He even has an air throw. So like, you know, you can go for the Pele kick, right? So he's, he's decent at throwing people. Let's talk the other foot, right? Let's talk left flamingo, right? Something basic here, like uh, down forward, one, three, right? So down forward, one, three, it's a little negative. Little negative. We're assuming it's blocked because, you know, if it hits, then hey, we're positive, right? So little negative. And what if Jing wants to swing right after the fact, right? What's going to happen there? You know, he's going to unload on us, right? Not necessarily a punish. But he's gonna unload on us. Good thing we can be stupid about it, right? So, just like before, we have armored moves. So depending on the severity of the buttons you want to press, we can blow you up. And even if you recover in time, the way Tekken 8 works, if an armored move triggers an armor at all, it's always gonna be safe on block for the most part. So this makes you want to not press buttons, I would say. And then from there, like, hey, you know, we got some proficient mids to work with. Uh, do we have lows? Hey, you betcha. In fact, wait, that's the same low from before, isn't it? And yes, it is. So if you don't block low, you get tapped and then we shift back into right foot stance, right flamingo foot stance. And then that whole blender begins again. Heck, we can even fake you out, right? You know, those strings were showing you there a second ago. How about I just do one and I just step cancel it and fake you out. And then after that, I don't know. Let's throw you. Why not? Right? Because you're worrying about everything else. And we got even more lows. This also shifts us in the right foot forward stance, which also has its own set of moves. Uh, we got so much going on for us here. It's kind of silly. For the most part, every stance has armor. Every stance has mix-ups. Every stance has something to ruin your day. And pretty much every stance has a way to flow into every other stance and can just kind of keep on going. So that's already well and good, right? But let's talk some other things, right? What does he have besides stance and trickiness? Well, he has a little bit of a move somewhat inspired by his rival, the Skyrocket. 
So it's not quite the electric wind god fist, but it's got some stuff to it, including one thing that's actually better than the electric wind god fist. So you saw the blue sparks. There is a perfect timing element to it, just like the electric wind god fist. If you do the regular version, negative 18 on block, right? It's bad news bears. Do the perfect version and it's negative eight on block. So, okay, what's going on here? You know, a perfect electric is plus on block. This is still negative. Like it's not punishable if you perfect it, but it's still negative. What's the difference? The difference is here. Notice that Jin is crouching. It's a mid, it's a true mid. So uh, you can catch crouchers in all shapes and forms in a way that an electric cannot. So yeah, it's worse on block, I guess, but it has a whole different world of possibility of catching people because it's a true mid, not a high like an electric is. And hey, if you don't want to bank on, you know, the just frame and all that, don't worry. He's also blessed as uh, one of the characters that has a safe on block generic launcher, right? Negative seven, not punishable. So that's really good too. Although to be fair, the range is uh, not as good, right? But hey, one's a heavy execution mechanic. The other one's generic launcher. So if you like attacking constantly and just like being a tricky nuisance to your opponent and just want it to always be your turn, Horong is really good at that because uh, it's kind of always his turn until the enemy knows what's up. Nino Williams, very classic character for Tekken and one of the harder characters to use. Uh, some of these characters in this video here, I mentioned they might be a little easy. I'm gonna tell you right now, Nina's a little harder, right? Uh, but before we get into that, let me just sell you on one point here, regardless of how difficult she may or may not be. Yo, she's got guns. Yes, sirree, she's got the guns, she's got the pistols, and they are indeed a full screen deal. Uh, so, yo, if you like guns and fighting games, they're there. Now, they're pretty much always tied to strings. Uh, you're not exactly zoning people out. Uh, but one thing to note, anytime you make someone block a move with guns, one, the move's almost always gonna be safe because it just has extreme pushback, and guns do ridiculous amount of chip damage. So uh, chip with Nina, especially with some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about, is a very real concern. And just because I bring it up with every character that matters, she does have a safe down for two generic launcher as well. So if you just like spamming launchers and hoping for the best, don't worry, you won't get punished with Nina. So as far as Nina's stuff, right? Like classic moves like the ivory cutter are still in here, double hitting mid, nice safe on block, right? Just, you know, good little button for what it is. She still has some decent slows, not the uh, most rewarding, but also pretty quick for what they are. The main thing is all about her movement, right? So she has a crouch dash, she has a back sway, and a lot of what you're gonna be doing, like say uh, down forward, one, two, this quick mid in the high right, and it's cancelable into either the crouch dash or cancelable into sidestep. And that's really the important one. I'm going to show you one of the best moves in the game, and you're going to look at him like, what the hell are you talking about? This. Doesn't that look dumb? Like, I know you're not sold on the visual of the move, but trust me, it's pretty good. So what is sidestep one? This is where a lot of the magic happens. So she kind of just like taps you on the chin. And one of the very important things about this specifically is the move itself is also cancelable either into your crouch dash or it is cancelable into her back sway. And when you do this, it makes the move very advantage on block. The numbers get really big if someone blocks it and you know, it's kind of difficult because it's a mid, right? Like you kind of gotta block it and then it's cancelled and then lots of things become possible. So let's look at it by the numbers here, right? So let's start with the crouch dash. So I made you block, I sidestep one, cancel on the crouch dash. What can I do from there? Well, at bare minimum, I got mids, and you better believe I got lows. I also have plus on block chip damage highs. So if you are just passive, still my turn, and you're gonna take a little chip. I got crouch dash two, well, not amazing how close, it's actually really good just in neutral. Uh, she doesn't have the biggest buttons or anything, but she can cover a lot of space with this move, right? So, so this is kind of neutral the button because she can get a lot of things going with this that uh, she otherwise can't. So it gives her a lot of range. It's a good button. And I also got crouch dash four, three, one plus two, which brings up the guns we mentioned earlier. Heck, just to make things extra sassy, we also have the bad breath. So this is like literally her spitting like mist on you. Like she's like Tajiri here. This move is unblockable. 
I began under my settings, right? Block all, block all, block all. And yet, eat crap on this one. Now, it does deal recoverable damage only. doesn't deal true damage. So, you know, getting tricked on the unblockable is always, well, tricky, I guess, right? So there's something. But yeah, it's an actual true blue unblockable. And it doesn't take 400 years to wind up either. And what if we now go for the backsway cancel? What happens here? Well, actually, just about anything you want. Uh, the thing about backsway, it only has one unique move, backsway four. And it's just a big old launcher, right? Uh, everything else, you cancel backsway. It'll just do whatever your neutral moves are. So it doesn't actually particularly matter as long as it's not backsway four. Like, say I want to poke you low, I can go like backsway down back three, and that'll just come out. If I want to go for like down forward one, two, and there we go, right? And here's where it gets tricky because here's the move that brought us to the party, and we sidestep cancel that, and we backdash cancel that, and then we cancel that into the party starter again. And then wait a second, how does this work? Oh, hey, uh, that looped back to the starting point, didn't it? And yeah, uh, if your execution's good and your execution's kind of fast enough, you can kind of keep the blender going for a long time. And that's part of uh, the trickiness of Nina, because this goes into sidestep cancel one, sidestep cancel one goes in the backsway, backsway then goes back into down forward two one, which then goes back into sidestep, and just kind of bobs your uncle and just repeat ad infinitum because you can cancel the backsway into basically anything you can cancel it into down forward you know two one and also uh just so you know it's cancelable into sidestep naturally enough right which means uh nina has some of the most cracked out movement in the game even by tekken standards like <laughs> That don't look right, but it works. She gained some space. And uh, I guess this leads into like the big one, right? So sidestep one's the big dog here. And since sidestep one can go into forward crouch dash or backsway, and backsway can go back into sidestep. That means she can kind of keep doing this over and over. And every time she cancels it, super plus on block. And the move itself is only 14 frames, so there's no real beat in it unless you're willing to like risk some movement or risk armor or risk something. If your execution is good enough, and mine certainly isn't, uh, your offense can kind of loop into itself. That's why Nina's such a high execution character. And she's got plenty of options when you're finally ready to hit buttons, right? Like, okay, how about something like forward three? So it's a plus on block, double high. And if it hits counter hit, you're dead. Crumple, full combo. Like, she can definitely play off your frustration, basically. Because she can kind of keep taking extra turns thanks to all of her silly uh, abilities to cancel everything into everything else. This is also where we are going to mention heat. So, we talked about guns. And guns do good chip. And uh, extra chip in heat. So, the chip's good there. But in situations like this... Like... Uh, she can just keep taking turn after turn, hit after hit, and the chip's going to keep building up. So some characters just have good chip damage because, you know, they have moves that just do good chip damage, right? Her continuous onslaught uh, allows her to really play with the chip mechanic of the game. So yeah, she's got a lot of good tricks like that. And also, she has a very above average throw game. So at bare minimum, she has all three throw breaks. So uh, one break, two break, and a one plus two break. Everyone has a one plus two break in this game. Also, specifically her down forward... 3 plus 4, you notice that flash? That drains all recoverable health. So if you uh, had that recoverable health, it's gone. But besides that, Nina has all sorts of chain grabs. So sort of like King. So if you keep guessing wrong, she's going to keep chucking you, keep chucking you, keep chucking you. Because that's just how chain grabs work. So it's kind of deadly. Also, she has grabs from the backsway. And this grab here, the first part anyways, is actually not techable. If you get hit by the backsway grab, you'll have options to break the follow-ups because this also has chain grabs built into it. But uh, the first initial grab, you just have to eat crap. So chain grabs on top of, you know, having all three throw breaks, on top of all the silliness we mentioned here with, uh, you know, sidestep canceling and just our general pressure and all the crouch dash stuff. So 
Nina's got a lot of game plans, just that she's a little bit harder to play than everyone else if you want to take her to her logical limit. Or at bare minimum, you can just do all the gun moves over and over and just shoot people. That works too. But yeah, Nina, very interesting character, uh, but you will have to put more time into her to get her to her maximum compared to some of the other characters in the game. Now let's talk King. Do you like throwing people? Okay, I don't know if you heard me here. Do you like throwing people? Do you like throwing people? Okay, I need you to listen up here. Do you like throwing people? Okay? Are you, are you having this sink in yet? Do you like throwing people? Okay? Do you like throwing people? Do you see someone? You're like, I gotta throw them. They gotta get grappled on. Then if that's the mindset you're in, then King is the character. Why? Because he is far and away with no equal the best grappler in this game. His throw game is the character. Everyone else, they have some throws. Some other characters, their throws are better than the others. King is the throws. He even gets to break a lot of rules of throws. Generally speaking, when throws happen, you know it's a one break, a two break, or a one plus two break based on the arms, right? Depending on which arm is reaching out the most is the break. And sometimes if both arms are reaching out, that means it's a one plus two break. But he has things like this. Shining Wizard is a one plus two break, right? And if we look at the animation, okay, it has that break. Giant Swing has the exact same break motion. So how do I tell which one's breakable and which one's not then, right? You don't. You literally just have to guess. Is it going to be a one break? Because Giant Swing is a one break? Or is it going to be a one plus two break with the Shining Wizard? You just have to guess. And that's the kind of thing King can force you into. In fact, he has multiple situations like this where it has like step throws and the animations are exactly the same, but you better believe the breaks aren't the same. So then you're in the chain grab situation and hope you guess right. And you can guess wrong over and over and over till uh, the cows come home and make you look like a dang fool. And speaking of the chain grabs here, uh, his move list is the biggest move list in the game. A lot of that is the chain grabs, right? King has a lot of ways to throw you. It's kind, like if you're picking up what I'm putting down here, that's kind of the deal. We even got a lot of throws from your favorite wrestlers of bygone days. Rest in peace. Hey, I can dig it. Hey, how about some uh, famous strikes as well here? Drop the leg, brother. You can do it. Hey, want to play politics and uh, bury all your best friends? We can do that. Do you want to be a nonstop compulsive liar about your childhood and how bad you had it when you're actually a nepotism baby? We got those moves too. And one of the best things about this for King specifically is throws in general got buffed in Tekken 8. So anytime you catch someone in a counter hit, the throw break window is much smaller to the point where it's uh, almost impossible. And if you catch someone doing an armored move or an otherwise defensive move, if I can catch you doing armor, you see that flash there, right? That flash means it is now unbreakable. Any defensive move, any armor, whoops, you're done for. That's a nice little buff for King's general game plan. And keep in mind, this is not new, but uh, King being King, he has air grabs, right? So if someone's doing a move that happens to be airborne and you catch them, it turns into the air version of the grab, right? Other characters, because they don't have air throws, it would whiff, right? But King... Other characters, you know, they don't have... Other characters don't have air throws, right? So in that situation where the jump happens, it whiffs. But for King, nah, I just grab you out of the air. So that's a nice little benefit. When people are trying to be defensive against throws, it actually works less against King as well. So King, the grappler, right? All about the throws. And it's not that he doesn't have other moves, because he certainly does, but like things like his low game, uh, it's a little anemic, I guess. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, other characters, they do lows to make you want to block, right? So you block low, then you get blown up by the mid. That's kind of how it works. So King, because there's so many throws, and throws are always highs, that's what makes them want to duck, the threat of the throw. So gets it to the same point, although in a different way. And don't worry, King's got those launchers too. So uh, he has up forward four. That's a big old knee launcher, 15 frames, like many other launchers. And also it launches like he's in the air, right? So it goes over lows. So many people trying to do moves with a crouch in it, you know, 
trying to low profile the high while attacking you, it'll blow up that attack exactly. So also works out. But hey, don't worry. Even when King's doing quote unquote combos, he's still grabbing folk, right? So that's what matters in the end. And besides grab, you know, there's other tools like uh, Ford, one plus four. He just bops you with his chest and it's plus on block. And when things are plus on block in Grappler World, that means time to go for a throw. He can turn bright red with his muscles flexing and he's literally just daring you to hit him. And if you do, he can easily armor through it. And don't worry, he's got a couple of specific follow-ups. Uh, one of the very fun ones here is uh, the Jaguar Sprint. This is one of the new things for King in Tekken 8. So the Sprint has a throw from it, naturally. Diamond Cutter, not an RKO, thank you very much. And as a throw in Tekken 8, it tracks, right? So you can't sidestep it. So therefore, you naturally, you would duck it. But the thing is, we got a whole suite of moves from here that might dissuade you from ducking. We got mids, we got lows. We even got a little bit of a pop up here, right? So there's a lot of options, but the real fun is in heat mode. So while in heat mode, the run is armored. So nominally you think, well, I'll just hit him out of it, right? But uh, no, you're not gonna be able to. So when he's charging at you like a crazy person, you try to hit him, whoops, you just got chucked. And more to the point too, while you're in heat system, uh, the heat drains, but if you do certain grabs, it can actually restore your heat. So the more you grab people, the more heat you get, the more heat you get, the more you can grab people. So this is a really long winded way to say, if you like grabbing folk, King is the character for you. Raven, Raven has returned after a little bit of a sabbatical. I missed Tekken 7, unfortunately. There was Master Raven, but not exactly the same character, but still, hey, Raven's back and better than ever. He's been improving his ninja powers because he's got all sorts of teleports. Uh, as a ninja, he's very proficient from fighting from back turn stance. That's just how ninjas do. His ninja clone powers are getting pretty good. And just to showcase there, some of the ninja powers, uh, his clone game's getting better. His teleport games are improving. The new stance as well, lots of cool ninja powers as you can see here, right? Lots of interesting things going on. I uh, still keeps a classic crouch dash here as well, which also has lots of fun stuff. Uh, the one thing, uh, obviously every character can do mids and lows. He's very proficient at it though. Both the stances here, the crouch dash and also soul zone give you very good mid and low opportunities. A crouch dash one, good mid with a ninja clone follow up. Crouch dash two, big old low. Crouch Dash 3, if you're feeling a little cinematic. <laughs> a very elaborate animation, to say the least. This is like other people's heat smashes. For Raven, that's just a regular move. And of course, classic mid launcher. And from Soul Zone stance, we also have lows. And this bad boy, also on counter hit, bops you on your head, gives you combo ability. Like for the character, I feel I don't gotta do too hard of a sell here. Like, do you do, like doing just cool ninja stuff, right? Cause he's doing cool ninja stuff all the time. Add that, you know, with a serviceable high-low game and good pressure. He's got the crouch dash. Everyone loves a good crouch dash. All sorts of Nimpo clones, all sorts of teleports and more clones. Like, he just does cool ninja stuff. He's Wesley Snipes if Wesley Snipes was a ninja, right? That I think that sells enough right there. He even does the classic ninja thing of, did you hit me? Well, actually, not really. You hit the ninja clone, right? So that's really cool. And if you really want to style people, we mentioned back turn stance, right? He's got a lot of offense from back turn. You can even counter while back turn. So it's a little specific on what it wants to counter, but still, it's the ultimate styling on the opponent. Yeah, Raven, just go out there and do cool ninja stuff. That's kind of the story here. So Dragonov, I always like Dragonov just because I like two things. I like big ignorant moves that have a lot of plus frames. And I like grabs and he has one of the better grab games in this game and actually got a lot better in Tekken 8 Thanks to uh, changes specifically to his heat system, which we'll get into But if I gotta teach you one move with Dragonov, like it's run two Like it's the move, right? It's the iconic move. That's why you just saw blue spark, right? Because it even has a blue spark just frame version So run two big old dunk Noxy on the ground great If you block it it's plus frames and it's a mid as well. So no ducking under it or anything like that, right? So all reward out of the gate. If it hits as a counter hit, gigantic bounce, guaranteed full combo. 
There's a lot of really good run moves in this game, and we covered quite a few in the video already, but like this is like the one, right? And if you're lucky enough to get the Jet Frame, you just do more damage. So it's only benefit. You're not losing out. You just gain extra damage if you get the Just Frame. And what do we do when we have plus frames? Well, pressure, pressure, pressure. It's our turn after all, right? No, do we go for basic strings here? He also has a Crouch Dash and more ways to enter the Crouch Dash in this game. And Crouch Dash has some pretty good moves attached to it. Crouch Dash 1. It's a big old bop. It's a high. Crumples. Crouch Dash 2. Gigantic launcher. Crouch Dash 3 is a quick little low. And if it hits counter hit, by the way, it will transition to a new animation and do a good amount of damage. Crouch Dash 4. Gigantic boot. Heat Engager, and just as a fun little bonus, also wickedly advantage on block and does chip damage as well. Once again, more plus frames. And we're going to talk more plus frames. There's a lot of plus frames for Dragonov. Uh, the Crouch Dash 4 replaces the old one, which is now Crouch Dash 3 plus 4, and that is armored. So if you're Crouch Dashing and you're a little negative, well, they're going to blow up. So lots of just solid options from the Crouch Dash. And of course, this one comes like basic pokes. He does have a Snake Edge style low, a little slower, but guaranteed launch he also has the classic down too which is a quick little pokey low leaves him crouching while doing it so it automatically will evade all highs it's negative one on hit but uh, it does leave him crouching so he can always do like wall standing four and if someone hits a button well you're just gonna win there right so negative one but not really that negative other things he has back one plus two the classic polish hammer captain kirk styled if you will and if it's blocked plus six monster plus frames which, once again, lets him keep his turn, right? Now, the one we weakness, I guess, if you want to call it weakness, is it just doesn't do chip on block, but that's new to Tekken 8, right? Uh, we have, you know, Run 2. Run 2 does chip on block, plus frames. We have uh, Crouch Dash 4. That also does chip and plus frames, right? But it's still a hell of a move. And it doesn't require setup, right? You can just do it. You don't need to run. You don't need a stance. Just ignorant plus frames. He utilizes all three throw breaks. So that's always handy. So, you know, good players will always be able to react, right? But you can't react to them all. And here's uh, one of the beauty things here in heat mode. Let's take that react to them all bit out of the gate here because uh, he has unteckable throws in heat mode. One of them is really fun, actually. So run two, which talk about like one run two is the move. There's also forward forward two, which looks like run two at least at the very beginning. And it has a faint cancel where if you do 442, 1 plus 2, he cancels it into a grab. And in heat mode, that grab, see that little flash, right? It's untackable. It's guaranteed. So if you're waiting to block mid run 2, which you will sh probably should be because that's the movie you'll spam, you'll get blown up by an untackable throw. So that's kind of cool. I really dig that they gave that a buff. Other things that are buffed, uh, he's one of the very few characters in the game with a crouching throw, right? And say if you hit 4-3 uh, as a counter hit, forces crouch, and actually gives a guaranteed low throw. And you cannot tech low throws in this game anymore. So just having low throw is a really good benefit. You can't tech it. That's really nice. And speaking of throws, anyways, he does have one of the few truly untechable throws. This cannot be broken. Uh, the deal is definitely a lot slower startup, so you can just duck it on reaction, but it's there. Actually, another note about uh, crouching throws as well. So Snake Edge, death on block, as it should be, right? Does have a fake out counter where you can go into low throw. And since, you know, it's not teched anymore, right? If you are fighting someone who's good enough to react to these, you can punish them for their good reactions and get a guaranteed ground throw on them. So that's kind of cool. And also one of the cool buffs here is his tackle. So the classic tackle has three break options, right? and hope you guess right, because that's just how that works. But the one thing about it is specifically in heat mode, the tackle itself cannot be broken. So you can still break after the fact, but uh, in heat, you just have to take the tackle and you have to guess right. So that's really cool. It makes uh, the tackle a lot more useful, makes this throw game a lot scarier in heat mode. He even gets some new ways to tackle while in heat. So if he does run two, specifically after run two, he can immediately shift into tackle. And once again, there's no teching it, right? So the grab game is getting better. So the ignorant plus frames game, you know, that's very alive and well with the character. Uh, the grab game's better than it's been. The fact that you can't tech a lot of these feints now is really cool in my books. So yeah, I think Dragon is doing pretty all right. Uh, the new moves work out. I like Crouch Dash 4. I think that's a really cool move. 
Uh, kind of very fitting with the character, just big ignorant plus frames. I like the fact that there's more ways to go into stance. And yeah, he's just doing pretty all right in Tekken 8. Zafina. So Zafina is our mystic slash fortune teller slash not quite possessed by actual Satan. So you may notice from some of her moves, her hands can get awful big. And that's because she has what is effectively the in-game world of Satan kind of trapped in her body. Jin tried to stop him and destroy the world to do so, but she actually succeeded. But the cost is Azazel is now trapped in her body. Now, the thing about having Tekken Satan in your body is it does give you some pretty cool friggin' moves. Like, you see all these gigantic uh, hand attacks, all that kind of stuff? They're all great. They all do a lot of damage, a lot above average damage kind of across the board. The issue is, though, even though I'm hitting you with gigantic cool moves, look at my health. I'm also getting hurt. The problem with summoning the demon here is... Even though I'm doing also good chip damage to the enemy with these moves, I'm doing chip damage to myself. Like, this isn't a showcase rage art video or anything, but just to give you an idea what we're working with here, right? Uh, the scale of Azazel is a lot bigger than some people doing like their rage art or heat smash where they do like a bunch of like cool kicks and punches. Now, thankfully, in heat mode, everyone has cool things to do, right? And for her, her cool thing is she can use all these devil powers without consequence. They no longer hurt her to do. And they still do a lot of damage to the enemy, and they do even more chip damage to the enemy, like titanic levels of chip. So you can kind of go to town and start using these moves just willy-nilly. Also, many of these moves in heat mode specifically gain a defensive property in that uh, specifically, she'll have the power crush ability so she can armor through many attacks while calling on the demonic powers. So that's actually, uh, well, very helpful that you can always just kind of make it your turn, your turn, your turn over and over and over. Like she's even so committed to the bit, she has a parry. And this is the parry here. And look at the damage she deals to herself before anything even happens. So you really got to commit. That said, if you get the parry off, the reward is also pretty big. It's very damaging for a parry attack. But besides the demon stuff, the Azazel stuff, one of the main just key reasons you want to play Zafina is she has multiple stances. So she has Scarecrow stance, she has Tarantula stance, and she has the Mantis stance. So Scarecrow is sort of the game winner, the breadwinner. Like this is like the main event stance. Tarantula, it looks funny. Like, look at that. <laughs> it's kind of crawling on the ground, right? And Mantis stance, like how Goblin stance, because like, <laughs> you're just kind of being all nefarious, right? Oh, don't like it? <laughs> I'll go the other way. A lot of your offense, one way or another, will just make you transition to the stances over the course of the gameplay, right? And the stances also can transition into one another. Also, the game wants you to transition to the stances. Like, it'll let you not transition. So it did give me an idea here, forward three. If I don't transition into the stance, I'm negative one. If I do, I'm plus three. So there's a pretty sizable reward, right? Generally, most of the moves and strings she has that transfer into a stance, you're just gonna have more frame advantage on hit or on block regardless. So it's to your benefit. So what do we got for the stance here? We got quick pokes here for Scarecrow. We got more Azazel moves. One really good one here, one plus two is a good source of uh, pretty heavy plus frames and it's a mid as well. So the only real way to deal with it is to sidestep it. We do have a snake edge style launcher. So if you weren't already blocking low, get launched, get comboed. You got low, low pokes as well. If you need it, the transition to the stances. We even have back one too. This is the classic kind of old broken Zafina poke. It's now in the stance specifically. And uh, it hits from very far away and is very, very fast. Like, you can rest assured, like, unless you're already crouching, you're getting hit. Simple as that. And to round it out, just in case we're negative frames, we also have a Power Crush Armored move as well from the stance. The other stances aren't as involved as Scarecrow. Like, Tarantula, you know, has quick lows. It does have a launcher from it. We got bigger mids. We even got bigger lows, but it's more of a transitional stance than like a way to actually win the game. 
Same with our little mantis slash goblin stance here. Uh, there are some fun things like one two, one plus two rather, is a power crush. Uh, we do have side swaps if you want to do that. There's not real value to it, but it's there. Uh, we have down four two, which is a safe launcher in the stance. So that's handy. Safe launcher is always a big fan. Also, we have down four, which is a counter hit launcher. It's a low. Normally it just hits low, but if it's counter hit and we get a big pop up, that's what works. It's good. But yeah, you're just mostly going to be kind of stand standing in and out of these. Uh, she also has good red pressure in that she has two different run moves that are both plus on block. One puts you into tarantula stance and the other one puts you into scarecrow stance, as you can see here. So besides that, uh, one thing from the older games, like her movement's still good, but uh, it's not maybe necessarily as like overwhelmingly top tier as it was. Some things are a little non standard for like her uh, universal launcher, 16 frames. She has a hop kick as well, 17 frames. So a little slower than average. She has an interesting array of lows, like a down two uh, as a counter hit launcher, pop people up. Also, you can force yourself to go into stance if you want. Down back one, two, uh, more damaging, but slower low. Deal here is if they block the low even, the second hits a mid. So they got to kind of wait you out. If they just try to hit a button right away, they get smacked, so that is actually pretty handy. Has decent sources of plus frames besides just the usual run attack stuff. Like up forward one, this quick little high poke, plus four. Forward forward two is a full tracking move here, so it hits both sides and does chip and is plus one. That's handy. Forward forward three is kind of the game winner here. Uh, so forward forward three, if you go directly into stance, it is plus four. Also on counter hit, it forces uh, unique animation, forces crouching, a lot of plus frames, and you can actually link into a combo from there from Scarecrow Stance. And also that combo does a lot of damage and it's also a heat engager. So uh, 443 is kind of the workhorse, so you get a lot out of it. But yeah, so cool Mystic Lady, what has devil powers. I think that sells people on its own and not just the usual Tekken devil powers. We're not talking that low grade stuff. We're talking like that pure premium original devil power right so if that sounds good to you then Zafina is that character now lars lars is basically like an anime superhero like he's got the move set for it basically right he's dripping with lightning he is a mishima by blood hey hachi is his father so that's why he's kind of dripping with lightning everywhere because it's kind of a thing right and he's so anime he's literally very literally in one of the naruto games so that's about as anime as it gets. So what is Lars in this game? Lars is big time pressure, 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 and rush down. So he has some unique steps. So he has dynamic entry, he has silent entry, and limited entry, and all sorts of various strings he has, all will go directly into these. So even when you block strings or when the strings hit, regardless, the pressure keeps coming because he's still coming at you with these various steps. And this is apropos of nothing, but counter hit back four looks cool as hell, by the way. Uh, just a really good animation. I like it. So let's give you an idea of what it's all about here. So let's take a string here like forward one, two, three, basic string. And it goes automatically into dynamic entry. We don't even have to hit extra buttons or anything, right? And of course, you can manually go into all these as well, but the strings will take care of this for you. And from dynamic entry, you know, we got those quick strings. He'll blast you up in the face. Um, we also got good lows. Lars has a lot of good lows. We got all sorts of crazy attacks just from this step alone that lead to all sorts of really fun situations. And that's just one. And once again, we can just do a string, go right into the step and get all sorts of options. Now the string we used in the example there was forward one, two, three, right? If we just do forward one, two, it actually goes into silent entry, which is a different step, which has its own different set of moves. So even in the same combo string we can go into different steps so off this we get big punches don't lots of big punches don't worry uh, also some interesting lows silent entry two specifically pretty handy especially because if you get the hit as a counter hit it will be a launcher and speaking of launchers silent entry three is just a launcher by itself uh we got all sorts of big old lightning kicks here like three plus four uh, very, very visually impressive. Everything Lars does is very visually impressive. Other strings like 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one will put us into limited entry. And of course, many strings will put you into the same stances, right? I'm just giving you examples. There's a lot of them. And limited entry here is kind of the most basic of all of them. 
but you know we have a low and we got a big old launching mid so that's kind of the essence of 50 50 itself also many of these moves will get big time buffs while you're in heat mode naturally enough like that low gets very uh more impressive as you can see besides that he's just full of good stuff like uh he's got the good uh 13 frame shoulder sends people flying that's handy he technically has a 14 frame launch punish which is better like the average is 15 frames uh specifically it's a uh, forward back two or well, four back two one specifically and it'll kind of slam to ground you can get follow-ups from there so he can get uh bigger punishes in situations a lot of characters can't uh, he has one of the best hop kicks in the game and naturally with such a good launcher uh because you know it's a hop kick style launcher goes over lows all the kind of stuff you can get all sorts of combo ability and it hits from very far away compared to some of the other comparable moves. So that's definitely just handy across the board. And speaking of 15 frames, uh, we also have forward one plus two, which is just a straight up crumple. So you can do whatever you want from there. And he also has an orbital. So like when it comes to like combo ability and his starting stuff, man, like Lars has a wealth of options. And he's just blessed with really good lows too overall, like down back four is just kind of solid as it is and on counter hit it's launch time that always works out forward 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 two it starts with a low specifically it's also fast enough to be effectively unseeable and it's just a solid 30 plus damage like really solid uh forward forward three plus four just quick sliding low so he can actually come hitting from lows from pretty far away like the boys he's just kind of good all around good combo ability good options Good pressure, good everything. Like if this sounds good and you want that sick back four counter hit, which I love this animation, Lars is that guy. Elisa Boskanovic, she's our pretty robot lady. And you know what? I think I'm gonna sell you or not just out of the gate here. But ow, we got chainsaws. So yeah, she's chainsaw woman basically, right? And uh, if that doesn't sell you, she also will rip off her own head and beat you to death with it. Not to be a rage art showcase or anything, but uh, I feel a lot of Alyssa's personality shows here because uh, she kicks her own friggin' head at you as part of her super, right? Like that's the kind of person she is. Okay, so before we get into the chainsaws, because that's the main event, let's just talk some of the other basics here. Uh, she has really good limbs, like her just general poking game or average length of her attacks is better than average. Uh, she does have a safe launcher. I want to bring that up every time it's applicable. Her down four two is safe on block. That's always good. And but yeah, so just long limbs, like uh, some, something as basic as like quick low poke, right? Her quick low poke just hits from a little bit further away than most people. So that's always handy. Uh, things like down three, that's another low poke, which hits from uh, even further away. As you can see here, also knocks down on counter hit. Forward two one has a lot of range. Three two has a lot of range. Back three for what it is has a fair amount of range. Back three has a lot of range. Like look how far away she is. Like this is like the bears and jack level and she can still connect, right? Forward three as well looks like a lot. Like, and she also gets follow-ups from forward three strings as well specifically. Uh, even to the point where some of her follow-ups can't reach from max range, right? That's how good it is. Forward four as well, another homing move. So she just has above average range compared to a lot of the cast. There's a fireball. Like, don't get hit by this. You have all time to just walk out. But if you do, like, it does a lot of damage, right? Like, you shouldn't get hit by this. But if you somehow do, don't. Also, uh, just to help with that, just to enforce you, right? Uh, it is unblockable. <laughs> so don't get hit by it. Just get out of the way. Also, right before we get into the chainsaw talk here, so uh, she has boot, and it's basically a command dash, which will give her various moves, and she'll rush across the screen, right? Uh, there's a lot of different options. It's not necessarily the main event, but it is there. So let's talk the main event, okay? Let's talk chainsaws. So chainsaws, now that chip damage is actually like a really big part of Tekken 8, you better believe all these chainsaw moves do chip damage, some more than others. And also speaking of chip damage and blocking, a lot of these are very advantage on block. Like one plus two in destructive stance here, plus four, forward one here, plus three, forward one plus two, plus eight. Also look at the chip damage on that. And now another thing too, chip damage, when you're in heat mode specifically, all the chainsaw moves do more chip damage. So enter heat here, let's bust out the chainsaws. Now look at this. 
Ooh, doesn't that feel meaty? Look at that. Can't block too many of these. Like, the big boy chainsaw moves do a lot of chip damage. Now, while you're in chainsaw stance, your movement's a little curtailed. Like, you have a slow walk, and you can just do basic dashes, that's it. But yeah, you got a lot of options. Like, one, that's just quick poke, right? Does damage. We have two. Two's just a launcher in and of itself. And also, uh, you get some rocket punches, too, if you want to get your rocket punch on. Uh, once again here, other things we showcase here, like uh, one, two, uh, forward, one plus two. It's hit confirmable. Has a follow-up. If you see it hit, you can just launch the enemy. Like, there's a lot of options here. The stance itself is actually somewhat simplistic because you can't use your normal moves anymore and like stuff like kicks like kicks just rev your blades so you're not exactly doing too much that other than using kicks to use dual boot to rush forward which also this gives unique moves while in chainsaw stance specifically so it's another way to keep the offense going but yeah the form's pretty simplistic but it just does chip damage lots of plus frames even something as basic and very fast like forward one here that means it's your turn, plus three. We got low options as well. Don't worry about that. Uh, if you want to swing your swords like a madman, we got those options as well here. Oh, not your swords, your chainsaws, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's a simplistic form. Like, once you're in chainsaw mode, like, the game gets a lot more basic. Not necessarily a bad thing. Basic is never a bad thing, but you only have a few set options, and most of them work out, right? Like, uh, if you get hit at all, chainsaw stance will go away. See here, Jack's attacking, and I got bopped once at all. That's it, that's over. Even if you block, that's it, it's gone, right? So if the enemy is taking any kind of momentum back, you can't stay in the stance for long. But if you can stay in it, like that's kind of the thing, right? Everything you have is all about eventually sending up chainsaw stance and going in their face. So if that sounds appealing and you just want to rip people to shreds as a cute anime robot lady, Alyssa's the character. Lily, Emily de Rochefort. So Lily, two things about her. She's just full of just solid moves, like just really workhorse moves. And she's also slippery in that she's very skinny. And this is a game where like kind of what you see is what you get when it comes to hurt boxes. And her side step and side walk is really good. So she can kind of just evade things other characters might struggle with. Like uh, the bears and Jack, she is not, right? She can slip through things pretty easily. And when it comes to the workhorse stuff here, because once again, we mentioned the normals are really good. The moves are just really good. Something like down 4-3. You know, big hook kick. You've seen a lot of this style of kick already in Tekken, right? Hers is a bit better than most. So bare minimum, plus 8 on hit. If it's on block, it's still plus on block. Always handy. And if it's a counter hit, boom, it's a big old launcher. Guaranteed damage, right? So the only possible weakness this move has is it is linear. Therefore, you could sidestep it. But otherwise... Plus on hit, plus on block, counter hit launch. What's not to love about a move like this? And we got a lot of other good moves like 4434. Uh, very airborne, goes over lows very easily. Barely negative on block, chip damage, just really good. Uh, when it comes to like poking, 44 is ridiculous. Like, look at that range. This is like Jack and Bear range, right? And she can connect also on counter hit. Crumple. Combo ability, right? More damage. So just a really ignorant move. <laughs> and speaking of ignorant, uh, stuff like the Matterhorn. Like, there's other moves like it, but uh, I guess it's most famous for Lily. Because I guess Lily attracts the kind of player that wants to go for the giant ridiculous launcher. And uh, this has nothing to do, like, don't do this move in an actual match. But she has, like, the coolest unblockable. Uh, just 4 4 one plus 2. It's literally, like, her spinning in place like a ballerina just to bitch slap you. And it's unblockable, so if you want to style on people, it's a pretty good way to do it. And she has kind of an annoying mid-low game in that, like, you know, we already mentioned down 4-3, 4-4, all that kind of stuff. Uh, she also has 4-4-3. So 4-4-3 is a leaping kick, also airborne, so it goes over lows. And we got a lot of options from it. So just on its base level, if you hit 3-4, three, 3-4 four, three four when it connects, then you'll just get additional damage. And it's also cancelable into her wave dash. So she does have a wave dash. And it's uh, course go forward to do the wave dash. And just like any wave dash too, to help with some of the evasiveness properties of her, right? It does low profile moves. And you do get some fun options from it here. Uh, launcher as well. Wave dash 3 is very good. Uh, in that specifically, it scrapes the ground while it's kicking. So even people who are just lying down on the ground can still get hit by it. So it's very good for her grounded pressure game. And for Lily specifically, normally this move 
if it were to be blocked, pretty negative on block. In fact, punishable on block, right? You cancel on the wave dash, makes it safe on block. And if it connects, when you know it, it's naturally a link combo from wave dash, and you can get a heat engager from it for some pretty respectable damage. So those are the annoying mids, right? What about the annoying lows? Like we have down three, which hits from very far away as a low. We have forward, forward, four, which is the famous Lily Stomp, and it gives us good advantage frames on hit. And she has a proper snake edge style sweep down back four. And if you get hit by this bad boy, full launcher, full combo. So a good suite of lows. But yeah, so she's just fundamentally solid, good pressure. Uh, once again, having a wave dash too always helps, especially with her. Uh, she has wave dash three plus four, which is also plus six on block. Combine that with down four, three, like her plus frame pressure and the ability to always keep it her turn is very strong. So if you're just looking for someone who's just fundamentally sound and someone who plays the 3D aspect of the game better than most, Lily is that character. Now, Feng Wei. So Feng is evil Kung Fu man. Kind of the whole shtick here, right? And the thing about him specifically is he's very slippery. He's got a lot of stances, he has a lot of evasiveness, and he allows a lot of moves that have built-in parry effects. So it can be difficult to actually get a proper lead on the dude because he's always slipping around or parrying your stuff. So just to give you an idea what I'm talking about here, things like up forward two, it's just a quick mid that has a step built into it, right? So there's just evasiveness out of the gate. Back forward one is a gigantic mid and he takes a big time step back before he goes to the attack, right? So he can easily dodge a move then come back swinging the other way. We have deceptive step. This is one of his stances. And from Deceptive Step, also taking a big backswing here, right? And you can follow through with other attacks. Also, very lucky here, has a Hell Sweep. So uh, if you're looking for a very high damage low, Deceptive Step has that as well. He has a Wave Dash. So he will be low profiling while he's working his way in. And the Wave Dash has very strong options. Uh, we have Wave Dash 2. That's just a straight up launcher. Wave Dash 1. He headbutts your feet. For some plus frames. Also, if it's a counter hit, he headbutts your feet so hard you backflip the other way around up into the air. And yes, you better believe as a launcher this combo ability. And if you're just looking for general safety, we have step one plus two, and he just headbutts you. And the headbutt is perfectly neutral on block, so no worries there. And when it comes to like defensiveness, we have shifting cloud stance. So it's another stance where he moves forward, unlike the other deceptive stance here. And you certainly have moves from it, right? You have armored moves. You got quick highs, you got full circle tracking moves, you got lows, you got all that kind of stuff. But the actual just startup of the move parries attacks. It parries all highs and mids just in the actual startup. And when it parries a move, you see here, has slight frame advantage. So it'll be your turn. But where it really excels is countering multiple attacks. So if you've got strings coming your way here, and Leroy is a good example of this, right? If it counters two hits or more, and once again, it could be highs, it can be mids, it just can't be a low. If it counters two hits or more, it just automatically goes into a guaranteed counter. That's it, that's all. And once again, this is like a setup stance, right? Like you can do stuff from here. Like you parrying a move could be completely incidental. And this is the case for other moves too. Like one plus two, right? Big elbow also has a punch parry effect built into it. And if you just happen to punch into it while the startup's happening, it's actually gonna be much worse for you than just taking the hit. Okay, Leroy is attacking us, right? Let's see what happens here. Oh, plus 14 after that counter. Can we follow that up? Let's see. Oh, yeah, definitely. Iron Fortress follow-up, right? And uh, guaranteed heat engager, loss of damage. So Fang and Leroy in that way are kind of two sides of the same coin. A lot of what they have can turn your attack against you as they're attacking. Now, to keep the train going here, uh, Fang has... You can debate this. I don't know. This is my opinion only. He has maybe the most ignorant low in the game. So he has down back three. So 17 frames, very fast, incredible range. Like, look at that. So it's already wicked fast for a low and has like range beyond well, most lows. And it's plus four on hit. So all upside, right? And if it hits as a counter hit, guaranteed damage. 30 plus, not bad, and it puts you in the back turn stance. And you might think, well, that's a bad thing, right? No, Feng's actually amazing in back turn stance. Like, he has his own unique throw from back turn stance for one that's cool as hell. Back turn stance two has armor on it. Uh, back turn stance three is the same as forward forward three, which is uh, one of his better moves in my opinion. It's a little slower, 
but uh, it's always going to do a lot of damage on hit. And it's always insanely plus on block with chip damage. So that's not bad at all. He has the elbows. I don't know what you call this. I, the martial art elbow. I don't know what you call it, but it always looks cool, right? Uh, he has uh, down one. He has quick lows. He has a snake edge low launcher. Like him being in back turn is not an issue here, right? So it's kind of all upside on top of that. He hits you with a stupid low that's too fast and big damage on counter hit. And then who knows what's going to happen next, right? So that works out. He also has good what we call panic buttons in back one. So back one by itself doesn't look like much. But if it says a counter hit, it splats the enemy down. And if it splats the enemy down, you can definitely get a follow up, right? So this is a 10 frame move. So if you're just like, I don't know what's going on uh, and you're worrying, 10 frame moves as fast as you can do anyways. And if it says a counter hit, then you get... I would say a pretty maximum reward out of it. And in heat mode, Fang is fun. That back one just gets that property on regular hit now. Like you don't have to get a counter hit, it just works. So it becomes like an actual guaranteed 10 frame punish. That's pretty cool. Uh, other moves here like forward, forward, one plus two. Big old punch, right? And it's holdable. And specifically on block, if you hold it, big old plus frames, right? And chip damage. But in heat specifically, now, it's a guard break, so you get guaranteed damage. You're not necessarily going to get the world off this here, but, you know, guaranteed damage is guaranteed damage, right? Can't argue against that. And he also gets a new super move. He gets three plus four. So it's not a heat smash or anything. It's just big old move, super plus frames on block. And if it connects, just big old splat, right? This is only available in heat. So, yeah, Feng's got a lot of things going on for him. Uh, he's slippery. He's tricky. He has offensive defense. And, you know, he's super serious, deadly kung fu master, right? We're a fighting game. We need a kung fu master, and he is that guy. So if that sounds good to you, thanks a dude. Lee. Now, part of the reason you're going to probably want to pick Lee is the style on people. Because he is Mr. Just Frame. Uh, his execution requirements is among the highest in the game. And the game rewards you for it. Like, specifically baked into his mechanics here. If you're in heat mode here, the perfect input mechanics... If you are in heat mode and you do your perfect inputs, you do your just frames, you'll gain heat mode back, right? So the more you can do the perfect inputs, the more and more you'll be in heat mode. Although if you're sloppy, heat mode specifically, it'll give you those perfect inputs. But yeah, he's very sassy, very stylish. Lee has an excellent attitude. I know that's not gameplay, but he's just high on life. He thinks everything's marvelous. But yeah, let's talk the perfect inputs here. Because he's got more than anybody else. I know a good portion of the cast has something and usually have like one or two. He's got a lot. A lot, a lot. Something basic like one, two, four. Like this is like just super generic string, right? If you time it perfectly, the final kick, you see that little spark, right? It'll do just a little bit more damage. On block, if you do the perfect timing, it does chip damage. It's a little thing, but you know, let's go from there. How about forward four, one? So another good string here. And the one thing about it here, you do the perfect timing, it makes it plus on block. So this is a move that's a counter hit combo specifically. On regular hit, it's not a self combo. But if you do it with not perfect timing, it's negative five. So it's not punishable, but with perfect timing, then it's plus. So hey, that works out. Similar little basic, like forward, forward two. It's just a big old punch, right? And if you get perfect timing, then it'll just do a little bit more damage. Some are not so basic. Like one, three, three, three. This one's actually very difficult to pull off. I'm not gonna lie to you, but just to give you an example here. So what this is, is almost 30 damage for a 10 frame, not bad. And it knocks the enemy down just directly in front of you. So it's very good, but the three kicks have very specific timing to them, right? And it makes it very difficult. So now let's go with uh, some of the more difficult moves here. Something like stand four, four, four. So if you do it, just a bunch of quick kicks, right? But if you do it correctly, then the move becomes a heat engager. So that's a lot better, right? Also, it matters a lot on block. 444 on block normally, slightly punishable. Like there's pushback. So depending on the character, they might not actually be able to get you, especially if you do it more of a maximum range. But if you do it perfectly, then completely safe on block, no worries. Another really fun one is off 3-3, where it's like kind of a kick fake out. So this has a just frame follow up here, where if you hit four at the exact right moment, 
then you'll hit the enemy and it'll kick them. And you might notice here, the enemy is set to block all right now, right? So that goes off even if they block. So it's guaranteed damage. That's very powerful, although it's honestly quite difficult to get the exact right timing for it. And we can go all day, yeah, but uh, Lee is specifically the character who, for people who like execution, I would say that. And he's got plenty of other things, like he has a hitman stance, he does the cool thing where he grabs your head and breaks your neck or whatever with your feet, I don't know what you call that, but it's always a sick move. He has a very strong counter hit game specifically, uh, things like uh, down three, quick low, right, on counter hit, splats him. And there's another element of timing here because he's just that kind of character. But with the right timing, he can pick you up off the ground, combo you out. Uh, things like down two, uh, not quite as strong as it was in Tekken 7, if I remember correctly, but on counter hit. You do get guaranteed hit into a heat engager, combo out from there. On counter hits, back four, uh, specifically, it's always kind of been the magic button. Uh, quick enough for what it is, it's a mid, and it's a gigantic bounce on counter hit. And specifically, you can just kind of fish for it. Uh, if it hits, it hits. It's barely negative. And the one trait about it specifically is he recovers almost instantly. Like, there's no real recovery on the move. Like, when the move's done is basically when he can block. So it's very difficult for you to stop him from just kind of doing this willy-nilly. Especially, you know, if he's uh, kind of playing any kind of real runaway here. So that's another really good trait of the character. On counter hit, 2-2 links into itself. Which is great, because we have 2-2-3. And that's almost 50 damage for a quick, like, 10 frame counter hit move. That's not bad at all. Another fun thing about Lee is back two, specifically. So back two cancels into his misstep. And he can kind of create a bit of a looping offense. Uh, very specifically useful for juggle combos, where you can kind of carry people across the screen. Uh, rest assured, though, just like the rest of Lee, they're very difficult to do. And uh, takes a lot of time to practice. But... That's kind of the roundabout way of saying, if you're looking for a super execution heavy character that you really want to style people on with, Lee is that dude. Ling Xiao Yu. So Ling is the master of the Phoenix stance. That's kind of like at the heart and soul of the character where she's so low to the ground, even sometimes mids will go over her head. Like here, look at poor Panda. You can definitely tell this is a mid, right? And nah, not against Ling. Uh, she can easily go under lots of mids, so you gotta watch out, because even moves designed to hit crouchers can't hit Ling when she's prepared for it, because she's just that tricky. Now, besides that, Art of Phoenix very powerful. She's all about the stances. So, we have here Hypnotist Stance, which has an auto-parry effect built into it on top of just having its own moves, which is great. And she's also incredibly proficient from fighting from back turn, specifically. Ling uh, can send uh, 800 pound pan to 20 feet in the air from back turn, right? So she's pretty good at it. And along with the stance, it's kind of just naturally evasive. Uh, things like down forward one. Down forward one, she kind of just crushes highs just as part of the move. She's low to the ground. Down back two, a quick low here. And also just very low to the ground, easily goes under all sorts of highs. And also leaves her in that back turn stance. Something like three plus four. Evasive in that it's airborne for a lot of it, right? So a lot of lows will just clear go under it. And the famed shooting star up for three plus four. Clear goes over lows. Even goes over some mids. And attacks like a crazy person just going nuts. Even if it's somehow blocked, it leaves you barely negative and leaves you in back turn stance where you get a lot of your fun tricks from. But to quickly talk the stances here. So like we mentioned back turn stance, right? So we got all sorts of offense here, like a uh, back turn stance one, two. We have two, one, four. Two, one, four is a strain to keep people honest. Because if we keep pressuring with two, one, eventually like, okay, well, I want to take my turn, right? And if they take their turn, and they take their turn to the giant wheel kick, right? Which is uh, back turn four. And this is the gigantic launcher that we showcased here. Two, two, one as well. Just a bunch of mids. Uh, back turn four. Once again, the launcher. Down three, four. We got some tricky... Uh, kicks here this is also a counter hit combo so quick low hit a button get blasted she even has legitimate grab mix-ups like actually like it's not like king or anything here but her uh, grabs have different throw breaks even though the animation's exactly the same so you kind of just have to guess and of course art of phoenix this is like the money stance right so low the ground so many options uh yes there's basic strikes and we do have heat engagers as well uh, we got nasty little trippy sweeps here. Hope you guess right on the block. 
In fact, we got all sorts of those, really. And uh, even uh, down one, if it hits this counter hit, goes into a lovely little hit grab animation. But don't worry, it's not all lows. We got all sorts of mids. We got all sorts of pressure, right? This is a uh, home for her a lot of the time when she's trying to confuse you and frustrate you. And that she does very, very well. And Hypnotist Stance, we mentioned has a punch parry, right? So even the mightiest of strikes here can get tossed aside here and then she can pressure you after the fact. Also, everyone gets those big buffs in heat, right? Uh, specifically her and Hypnotist Stance. Uh, her Hypnotist Stance gets a pretty big buff and many moves get much stronger properties like knockdowns on the quick lows. She can be tricky to deal with with all the stances and the fact that uh, so many stances and so many moves just have sort of auto evasion built in and she can kind of maul you if you're not prepared for her. So if you're just looking for tricky martial arts girl, Xiao Yu is that character. Okay, let's talk Reyna. All right, Reyna, the new character. Everyone loves this character, right? So Reyna is the inheritor of most, not all, but most of the Heihachi Mishima moveset. Part of that also went to Kuma, his true son. And yes, she has electrics. So don't worry there, right? That was an issue. Don't worry. That's solved. But she also is an interesting mix of partially Heihachi's moveset, but partially her own deal. So one, just in case you doubted it, like the electric didn't sell you, she's got the big ignorant headbutts, just like Heihachi, right? Uh, she has the Mishima Ford Ford three. She has the palm, the death palm, like Heihachi has one plus two. She has the dragon uppercut. Uh, she's got the Mishima one, two, two with the back fist, right? So she has all of these traits. She even has some Santas right out of Heihachi, right? Like uh, heaven's wrath here. And from here, Got all sorts of fun moves as well. We'll talk about that in a second later. But uh, yeah, so she has a lot of that. But she also has a lot of her own martial art called Taino. And the thing about Taino, even though this part of it's not the actual martial art, she has an electric war god kick. So it's an electric kick. It's a different kind of deal. Not quite the same as like a traditional electric as it's negative on block. But unlike a traditional electric, it's a mid. So uh, you can't duck it. Besides that, uh, a lot of Taino has a lot to do with like kicking and rolling around, um, being low to the ground while kicking upwards. So like that's three plus four, four. Uh, we have forward one plus two, up forward three. And see more low to the kicks, uh, more low to the ground kicks rather. Four, three plus four, rolling on the ground for a big kick. And you can hold it by the way. Big old hit if it connects and a true guard break if it's blocked. So that works out. You don't exactly get like a lot off it, but guaranteed damage is guaranteed damage. Down four, three, plus four, four, back four, like, so a lot of being low to the ground and kicking. That's another part of uh, the martial art that's unique to her that's all her, nothing to do with Heihachi. Also, uh, not necessarily gameplay, but she looks expensive. Like a lot of her animations, they went the extra mile with her. Something like a forward one plus two, three. Hits this counter hit. Like that looks really cool. Um, if we have uh, down four, three plus four, hit its counter hit. Like again, right? It looks like cool. Like uh, even something like her wave dash. So there's like big sparks going on there, right? Uh, so you can tell she's doing it and just a lot of extra care and details gone into this character, I feel. So besides that, she has just a lot of interesting properties, like a lot of little stances, uh, like uh, up three or down three has like a punch parry built into it. So you can see a little bit of a time stop effect there, right? This is something Heihachi had as well, but uh, the effect was nowhere near this pronounced. And she can also do it just by hitting forward. Like literally like a third strike parry, right? So uh, after that, she goes right into the wave dash dance. You can do whatever you want to do from there. But yeah, it's a very interesting defensive aspect of the character. She also has a unique spin stance where she just kind of spins in place, right? And lots of options. Don't worry about that. We got mids. We got lows, we got all that kind of stuff. And also uh, something unique to her, uh, she has inescapable throws. Now these throws do not do a lot of damage as you can see here, right? But they're not techable in any way, shape or form out of spin stance. Uh, much the same here, like old Grampy Heihachi. If we're in the heaven stance, uh, a bit more uh, dramatic as far as the throw goes. Also completely inescapable. You just gotta eat crap. Also heaven's wrath stance. If for some reason after all this, you doubt the Heihachi link, when she's in heat specifically, you try to hit her, she'll just stomp the crap out of you. She does like a revenge mechanic. You cannot hit her while she's in the stance or she'll just absolutely crush you. So yeah, 
Just like uh, old Grampy Hey Hachi. Reina's got a lot of upsides. All these little mini stances, uh, ability to parry a lot of moves, and you know, the classics as well, right? It's all good too, right? Uh, if I hadn't label any weakness for her, uh, her low game seems just kind of ho hum. Like um, some of her basic lows just even leave her negative on hit. Uh, she does not have a traditional hell sweep. Uh, we can get some damage out of it, sure, but not like you know 30 plus with a knockdown like a lot of other characters that have the hell sweep style of move. So her damage from lows is a little suspect. But I guess everybody's got to have a weakness, right? But uh, for the most part, yeah, Reyna's super cool, super stylish. Um, definitely a lot of care went into making the character as far as, like, all the animations go. Uh, she's uh, just really cool and really styles on the enemy in a lot of really fun ways. So if all that sounds good to you, Reyna is your character. Now, Devil Jin. Obviously, a lot of similarities to regular Jin, but don't worry. Devil Jin's a much nicer guy, for one. Uh, not a war criminal that destroyed Earth like human Jin. Devil Jin didn't do any of that. And uh, also, uh, one of the key differences, I guess you could say, is Hell of Lasers. Uh, Devil Jin going all in on the Devil Laser motif, let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, let's talk some of the crazy things about this character, because they're going a little wild with him. So one, can he fly? You betcha. Don't worry, all those fly shenanigans are still very much here including like the old side swap lasers and all those gimmicks you like to mash with. So we got those. And yes, being the character, he has a, a good chunk of Jin's moveset. Uh, there are some core differences, like uh, Jin's forward forward two is amazing. Devil Jin's, eh. Like it has a heat engager on it, but like as far as like the range goes, has like half or less the range of what regular Jin has. But on the flip, things like uh, the old laser chain, right? Uh, back forward two one two, right? Unlike Jin's, Devil Jin's does chip damage. So that's actually pretty nice. And you can see here, a lot of things will have little chain mechanics to them here, like as a visual flair. You'll find that throughout Devil Jin's motif. But you know what? Okay, Ford 4 2 maybe has half the range. Don't worry about it, because he's got something way more ignorant. He has up forward one, this bad boy here. So up forward one. It's a big old, like, semi-projectile, big old chain. Has a lot of range, as you can see here. It's difficult to miss with this move, just straight up, right? And if it connects in any way, shape, or form, he'll go into his new fly stance. So that's normally just forward and three. Has incredible advantage on hit. In fact, in the fly stance, it leads to some guaranteed damage. Uh, fly stance 2-2 two, two is guaranteed and a heat engager from up forward one. And if for whatever reason it's blocked, it's still plus 11, plus 11. So yeah, this super like long range sniper cannon move, like from this far away, like even further away, like yeah, it's pretty good. And hey, fly stance is pretty good. Uh, well, not that fly stance, this fly stance, right? So you have a lot of fun options from here. So uh, as we mentioned here, if up forward one connects, we get two, two guaranteed. So um, four, three, two, is a full tracking move, which is great because we have 431. So 431 by itself is plus eight on block. So even if you block this bad boy the first time, there's another potentially plus move coming your way. Also does chip damage, really good. And also it can knock down on hit, just kind of splats on hit. And if you're uh, asleep at the wheel, got some lasers coming your way. Let's put it that way. Also has a very elaborate launcher. So. Uh, we have our little fly dash four, and if it connects, you can go two, one plus two, and then we get this elaborate piece of business. So there's a lot of things, uh, and also naturally here we have a special mid just to stomp you out as well if you want to play around. Let's get to some of the general Mishima stuff. Yo, is there electrics? Of course there is, right? It's Tekken. Mishima, you have electrics. So he still has that, uh, and he has a lot of the classic move set from, you know, uh, the Mishima Wave Dash, like he's got the Dragon Uppercut, right? Uh, obviously the Electrics. Uh, he's got a fun little hop kick here. Uh, he has a fun little uh, kind of mid hitting one plus two. That's a full tracking move. And then we got the Hell Sweep. So he's got the old Hell Sweep of uh, four four, where he kind of hook kicks you on the head. And he's got Hell Sweep with one plus two into a laser, which launches. And this makes it, and this is my opinion only, uh, I think he's got the best hell sweep in the game 
Not because it's like kind of any different than the usual fare of, you know, very quick low and the damage. It's just the amount of damage he gets. Because thanks to the fact that it kind of launches the enemy, right? He can go for that up forward uh, one. And if he goes for that up forward one, it will connect. And that's almost 50 damage off an unseeable low. And that's insane by this game's standards, right? To take so much damage off a low, frankly, is kind of wild, right? Like, it's a fast low, too. It's not even like a snake edge or anything with, like, you know, 30 frame startup. Uh, we didn't burn any resources. It just it makes the low game for Devil Jin very scary. Also, speaking of very scary, probably don't get hit by sidestep two. <laughs> It does like 70 damage. What? So yeah, probably don't get hit by that. that. Look out for that one. So he's very solid. Like he has a lot of the Mishima stuff. You know, he has a lot of the Jin stuff. Like it's all there. Uh, but just, you know, with a big heap and the lasers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, once again, uh, up one. Very impressive move. I feel this is like a defining move of the character. The range it lets him play at is insane. Compared, like, you know, what the rest of the cast kind of has to deal with, right? Uh, fact that it's guaranteed damage on hit. Pretty strong pressure and mix. And potentially you losing turn after turn after turn on block. Because of the stance here, I believe it's called Morning Crow. The fly stance here. Because uh, there's very powerful options out of it. So if you love that grim, dark, evil stuff. Along with some pretty solid game plan. I think Devil Jin is the character for you. And that is the video. So Tekken 8 has a lot of characters, a lot of variety. Once again, too, I think this, the general character expression, the uh, variety of the character game plan, what the characters can do is the most unique and the best it's ever been in the history of Tekken, right? And hopefully this video has helped you understand the characters and what they're capable of and help point you in a direction for a character you might like to play. Uh, I don't know how long this video is now. We'll have to edit it, but uh, I'm sure it's a very long video. So if you could leave a like, that would be sincerely and truly appreciated. And besides all that, well, I guess we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Tekken.